won't see me on Mount Rushmore, but that's okay. Oh, no. That's okay. Uh, not worthy. That's a miss. That's a miss. Yeah, that was a miss. Were you an honorable mention? No, nah, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's what it is at this point. Um, on today's part of my take, we have a twofer for the people. One of our favorite old-time recurring guests, real AWLs know, Tony Scheffler has been a friend of the program from since the very beginning. Uh, we had a great time talking with him. And then we also have GM for the Buffalo Bills, Brandon Bean. Very good time with him as well. His son's a big AW, AWL, so shout out him for getting us Brandon Bean on the show. Recurring guest. Recurring guest. We have had him on as well. Uh, we are going to do the Mount Rushmore of Trilogies, and it was a doozy. Hank's baby. Hank has been pressing for this one for a while, so... Hopefully he steps it up and has a great round of trilogies. I mean, no one else fucking suggests anything. We so. should maybe for That's this. That's a little early in the show to be using profanity. For yeah. this Mount Rushmore, we should maybe do a fourth option on the voting of like we all AWL's lost. I'm down with Give that. Give them two wins, mm. uh, two, two points. But uh, yeah. we we have uh, we're, we're going to talk some ball. We got some who's or sorry, hot seat, cool throne, and some FAQs, and it's all brought to you by our friends at Paramount Plus. Listen up, AWL's. Football season almost here, and Paramount Plus is once again your home to stream the new NFL on CBS all year long. Visit ParamountPlus.com slash NFL right now to get an exclusive offer for Pardon My Take fans. 50% off the annual price for a whole year of Paramount Plus. That's just $2.50 a month to stream all the best games and craziest moments from every single live local NFL on CBS game this season that includes the regular season through the playoffs and remember this year paramount plus is your streaming destination for super bowl 58 as well paramount plus also gets you an all-access pass to 24 7 nfl content all week long with cbs sports hq fantasy football today nfl slime time and more all for just 250 a month that is an incredible deal you're a football guy or gal you need paramount plus so add it all up and it's Hot Seat, Corporate America, cool throne, NF, cool throne NFL fans, and your wallets. Stream Paramount Plus on any device at home or on the go and catch another action-packed, unpredictable season of the NFL on CBS. Streaming on Paramount Plus. Sign up at ParamountPlus.com slash NFL for 50% off today. Offer ends 920 annual plan only. Terms and conditions apply. Also, I'll go off script real quick. For any parents out there, Paramount Plus is a must. It has great shows for the kids. So say you're getting Paramount Plus for the kids, and then you get all your NFL action. That's actually a great deal right there. $250 a month for all of this. Paramount Plus is the best place to watch NFL on CBS and all the NFL action all year long. It's almost football season. Get your streaming in order. Paramount Plus right now. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take. Today is Wednesday, August 23rd, and the Washington Commanders have had the biggest win in preseason history. We did it. We did it, Joe. We Un stopped the streak. Unbelievable. It was actually a very entertaining Monday night game. It was. I don't know if you guys watched it uh, all through the end. It was It was awesome. It's just good to win one in D.C. Some people were being haters, saying like, oh, the, you guys are acting like you won the Super Bowl. It's a preseason game. It doesn't mean anything. Listen, this was not just a preseason game for the Commanders. This was a release. This was released as the first home game since Dan Snyder's no longer the owner. Brand new regime. Brand new team. Brand new quarterback, Sam Howell. It was good. It was good. Everything kind of fell in line, um, and the team played well. And, yeah, people have been making a big stink about the Ravens streak. We did. I even bet on the Ravens just because it's like, Idiot. okay, we're going to keep betting on the Ravens yeah. until they lose. It's a good investment. Um, it was a magical night for everybody in D.C. Josh Harris might have had a tough look in the booth. Ah, uh, that so, would be putting it mildly. Not, uh, well, no. Th listen, they brought him into the booth. They interviewed him. And Joe Buck stuck his hand out right in front of Josh Harris's face. What is Joe Buck doing? Stay on your side. Stay on your side, Joe Buck. Jo he was in Josh Harris's face. He's being polite. Oh, and now we're going to drag the guy through the mud because he's friendly? I'm sorry. Well, the guy that just displaced Satan wait, is going to get a pretty long leash in my book. No one's dragging him through the mud. It was a cringy, weird moment by a billionaire who I believe that all billionaires are weird, that you don't get to a billionaire without being a little weird. Yeah. 
And it was also Josh Harris's reaction afterwards when he realized I fucked up. He puts his hands. That on was the, he puts his hands on his hips. Troy Aikman is doing everything in his in in his uh, body to not l- burst out laughing in Josh Harris's face. I mean, a hilarious, hilarious clip. But yes, you're right. Perspective. If the worst thing you could say about Josh Harris is he doesn't know how to read social cues and he's weird and he's cringy and he mistook a handshake for just a, a gesture. That's a good day. It, it is. It's on Joe Buck. Joe Buck stuck his hand right in his chest. And what was Josh oh, Harris? Joe Buck do? was in the zone. He was in the zone. But Joe, you got Joe. Stay on your side of the booth. You that was entrapment. Um, I, I'm going to support Josh Harris no matter what through uh, this. But yeah, I mean, if the biggest problem that we have is that now our owner is too friendly with the media, God, it was so cringe. He's shaking all the hands, so kissing all the babies. Listen, I'm I'm going to ride or die with him. So whatever, uh, whatever. We've all made mistakes. I watched it so many times. I can't stop. Why? Pull it up for me, Hank. I want to watch it again. Uh Jahan Dotson said afterwards, I feel like we just had the biggest preseason win in history. Yeah. And I'm watching it again real quick. It's a oh, fact. Oh, and he put the hands on the hips. Hands on the hips afterwards. Hands on the hips is just a bad look in general. Played it off. Played it cool. Oh. <laughs> it was just a limp handshake, too. Oh, no. He, like, tagged his fingers. What was Joe Buck Sand doing there? He was doing his job. He was asking for it. He was broadcasting. Uh, Joe should apologize. Was provocation? Joe, yes. He, it, did you see what Joe Buck was wearing? He had <laughs> those short little sleeves on. He was looking but, for a handshake. Listen, if a, it's like if a guy, if a billionaire that makes his business closing deals left and right sees a hand in front of his face, it's your fault for putting it there. Are you a little worried that the, maybe the reaction to a preseason win was a little much? I mean, it was cool because... Nah. Outside of the fact that I also bet on the Ravens, it was cool because it is new owner, like feels like the vibes are, are back in D.C., but um, Joey Sly doing the L. Yeah. Jahan Dotson saying it's the biggest win in preseason history. I didn't. Did one of your receivers get turf toe? Uh, Terry McLaurin might have gotten turf. Yeah, That's one important. of our receivers. That's important. No, no, yet. I'm waiting for That's, all the facts to come out. I on I feel Terry's like toe. preseason wins don't matter. It's really just everyone check your body, make sure that you're still alive. Yeah, well, Terry got injured, but it wasn't. It wasn't like we were keeping our starters in to win the game. So right. it's not like we played the starters because we were on a mission to win. It was like, yeah, we we're going to try did. to win the game. Just with Jake Fromm right. in the game, and Jake Fromm came up big. In the first half, I think you guys had all your starters in against the second and third team Ravens team. I don't. I can't comment on that. All, all I was thinking about I'm was not, listen, the Ravens it's, backups. I was just. I see Josh Johnson out there, and I'm like, I want Josh to find his forever home. He's a very good boy. Yeah, He's such it, a good boy. Somebody it, just take him in for life. The uh, the scene was great, and it was very funny because afterwards, like with Joey Sly doing the L and everything, I would imagine getting into the locker room after, and they're like going crazy, and then someone was like, wait. It's preseason. Well, it's just it. It was fun to win one. Yeah. It, it was. It was about way more than this game. You're practicing about, winning. Yeah. It was exactly. Yeah. We you got to. You got to do a dress up rehearsal for you know before you do the the rehearsal dinner and everything. You got to walk through the wedding. You got to walk and see how you can win. Yeah. And as Bruce Allen, our former GM, said, we're very good at winning off the field. We've been consistently winning off the field. Yeah. Now it's time to turn it to on the field. On the field. But yeah, it was just it was about much more than that one game in particular. And just seeing the crowd be into a football game was cool. Even if it's a, a preseason game, we haven't had that. It feels like since RG 3s rookie season. Yeah. That was the last time FedEx Raul John Maryland was bumping. So listen, I'm just I'm happy to see it. Magic Johnson was happy to see it. He was from his yacht. I'm so I, I'm so excited about this year. Getting Magic Johnson commanders tweets after every single game. On Monday. It's good. Yeah, maybe. I hope it's even later than that. I hope yeah. it's Wednesday. He, he, Magic Johnson, say what you will about Magic Johnson. He's got AIDS. No, uh, he vacations better than anyone in the world. He does. I he's, think he's been on a yacht for three months straight. Yeah, he, that dude is constantly on a boat. He's, he's having the best time ever. Yeah. he's your. He actually is your. Like, if you had a dream board, an Etsy dream board, it'd just be Magic Johnson on a, on a boat pictures. He knows how to do it, yeah. yeah, or just get nominated to the AIDS. Supreme Court. Um, we we are we are doing. He doesn't have AIDS anymore, by the way. Big Magic Johnson. It's get what HIV. has he ever done? Pretty it's ironic, ironic name that he has. I, I that clip pops in my head of Don, uh, Donald Sterling at least once a month. Mm-hmm. It's you know how you, you your brain is riddled by the internet. We've all been poisoned, and you just have random things pop in your head. Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. But I, I can't change who I am. It just happens. Yeah, magic. You put it in here, Max? Can you put the clip in? Yeah, he put it in. Uh, all right. Other things. Sort of magic. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, other things. We're not watching Hard Knocks tonight. Should we say what happened? Uh, yeah. Matt, uh, Aaron Rodgers hugged a few guys. Uh, the offensive line still looks bad. Nathaniel Hackett said something funny. 
uh, the defensive coordinator, D line coach guy with a beard screamed at somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, offensive line. They definitely focus on that. Aaron Rodgers not super happy about it. He's got to get the guys ready. Got to get the guys together. Uh, they won their preseason game. They lost. They lost. They lost yeah, their preseason games. What happened? Zach Wilson looked good though. Zach Wilson looked, looked good. Great, so yeah. maybe a little speech after by Salah. Maybe like Zach Wilson and Aaron Rodgers bonding, and then Zach Wilson playing good. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm going back and looking at what Aaron Rodgers said about Zach Wilson, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, he said like I'm going to be here for the next couple of years, then hopefully turn it over to Zach for the next 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. That's a great run of quarterbacks. I think Aaron was being sarcastic when he said that. He might have been. I think he was laying the praise on a little bit thick and having a big joke on everybody, being like, yeah. Zach oh, he's Wilson, a funny guy. He is. A, he is Aaron Rodgers is a very funny guy. Z yeah, Zach guy, Wilson, selfless. Quarterback of the future, hopefully. I think I think he was taking a dig, but by being super polite to Zach Wilson. Mm -hmm. Like, Zach will not know that I'm making fun of him because I'm being so obviously over the top because he truly believes that he will be the quarterback for the next 15 But that doesn't matter. if he's Even if he's trolling, Zach Wilson takes it as real. That's real encouragement. That's how good of a guy Aaron Rodgers is. That's true, or how dumb Zach Wilson is. But by the way, uh, watch the uh, PMTV on Thursday, Ghost Hunting. This place might be haunted. I feel like dizzy right there. Yeah, a little bit, actually. Yo, I'm not touching that. You didn't touch this one? No. This, that's crazy. This is never due. Oh. Oh my god. Is it Joe? Oh my god. Oh my god. It's like, oh my god. Is there someone else in here? Hello? Hello? Cheers. What is fuck? that? What the fuck? I am now, I, what started as a bit, I'm now rooting for Aaron Rodgers. All right, so so just to be clear, um, the ghost telling you to bet on Aaron Rodgers, that's not a bit. No, that was Okay, real, that, that one's the real part. Well, it's real yeah. money that I yeah, bet. True. And but, a lot of it. Because I've bet a lot of money on yeah. bets. Yeah, I mean, listen, if, a go, if I win a ghost bet, a ghost tells me to bet something and I win it, is that not one of the greatest stories ever? It's a, it's a pretty good it's story. It's a pretty good story, so... I you got to you got to at least take the first pick the ghost gives. So right? I would watch Hard Knocks if every week Owes the Mentalist was on it. Yeah. With a different team. They should just do Hard Knocks Owes the Mentalist. This guy's flipping out. Um all right, other stories. It's not Oz. It no, it's Owes. Oh. So you, you think he literally Dr. came on the show. No. Yeah. You're thinking Dr. Oz. Um Max, do you have anything to say about Jalen Hurts insisting that his teammates place the blame on him for the Super Bowl loss? Uh an Eagles staff member told uh Jalen Hurts, bro, you're a big reason we got here, and you're a big reason we're going to get back, and we're going to finish this thing. Hurts made direct eye contact and said, you're fucking right. But he told everyone, he's like, I'm the reason. He leader. Made everyone. Leader. Okay. I, but also, like, men. don't you think it would have been smarter to be like, it was actually the grass? No. Well, no, that's, gra that's a guy just taking accountability. He's a better man than me. The I'll, grass. Let, I'll let him take control. I'll be the one giving him excuses. Yeah, that's right. You did. Do you want to take accountability for laughing at us for laughing at Jerome Bettis Rams? Fuck off. Okay. Do you well, want to, I mean, you didn't apologize for when you said that you were doing your victory laps over the well, greatest Well, that calls. was because people didn't respect Somet Jim Ross. Yeah, sometimes sometimes you're wrong in the booth and I was wrong in the booth. Fine. Okay, I accept your apology. That wasn't an apology. <laughs> uh Jalen Hurts, yeah, he's he's demanding people tell him that he was the reason they lost. I mean, I'd, you'd rather have it be that way than the other. Agreed, way. but he, he did, was not the reason they lost. Yeah, he was like not. The well, defense not getting a that, sack. Well. That fumble that he had was pretty bad. It was. It was yeah. a pretty, very bad fumble. Colin Coward also left him and AJ Brown off the top ten list, and that that oh, has all the Philly triggered. But in terms of like out. quarterback wide receiver combos, yeah. I like it. Yeah, that's that's Coward's game, man. You yeah. gotta you gotta yeah. understand Coward's game is he will take one combo. He loves doing these combo things. We talked about the one with the Bills where he had Josh Allen and McDermott ranked like the eighth best mm -hmm. coach and quarterback combo. He'll pick one person randomly and then just either leave them off or put them insultingly low, just so that people like Max will be like, "Fuck you, Colin. I fucking hate Colin Coward." We should start yeah. taking pay like 
Top five quarterbacks in the league right now. Uh, Sam Howell. Josh Allen. Sam Howell. No, Josh, Josh Allen, Allen. Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow. Uh, Jalen Hurts. Um... Trevor Lawrence. Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert. That's our five. Yep. That's our five right there. Print it. Put it out there. Those are our top five quarterbacks in the NFL right now. It's genius. Just put it on a graphic. <laughs> hey, by the way, memes. What did we miss? I know you're on a performance improvement plan right now, memes, through us. He is on a pip. Uh, just want to make a note. We requested that you issue a formal statement from part of my take regarding the Yankees and our vote of confidence in Aaron Boone oh. and how the Yankees should extend Aaron Boone. Didn't see that one come across social media, memes. Uh, did Jake get to you? Did Jake got you? <laughs> no, I'll take full accountability okay. on it, even though our graphics guy was in the room. Okay, so, oh. Oh, okay. wow. oh nice. Was up. Nice. That was fucked. All right, so we need both those graphics. We need the top five quarterbacks, and then we need uh, us giving a vote of confidence to the Yankees. Unfortunately, Shane, our graphics guy, has got a pretty full plate whipping up photoshops of Bryce Young in ISIS and uh, Sam Howell in the Taliban <laughs> and CJ Stroud as the Proud Boys. I actually got some a lot of AWLs. I love you guys. They sent me a lot of other recommendations for names for quarterback fan clubs. Joe Burrow, the Joth Keepers. Okay. Pretty good. Uh, the well-regulated Willisha for Will Levis. Okay. The Pertophiles for Brock Pur Brock Purdy. I like that. Kirk Cousins, Westboro Baptist Kirks. Okay. They play the Jags. He could hold a sign that yep. says God hates Jags. Yep. Uh, the Desbians. I forget. Who. Oh, that's for Desmond, Desmond Ritter. Ritter. Desmond okay. Ritter. All right. And Patrick Mahamas. Mahamas. Patrick Mahamas. That's that whole Okay, we'll work on that. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. work on that one. Uh, so Shane is going to get to those before he does <laughs> memes his Photoshop. Uh, last thing I had. Well, I had two last things before we get to Hot Seat Cool Throne. Do you guys have Trayvon Diggs on your Hot Seat Cool Throne? I did not. Okay, so we should probably talk about it right now. Trayvon Diggs. Unfortunately, Trayvon Diggs, now Twitter X, he doesn't realize he can still see the likes. Oh. And uh, Still up? He liked, no, it's not still up. He liked a, I'll just describe it. It yeah. is a woman- Naked, with a very large strap on. Okay. And it says... Sex positive. Like equals you'd suck it. Yeah, why is he on the hot seat? No, he's okay. not. All he's, right. Uh, this is a topic. All right, so We're wait. We're just doing a wait, topic describe, right it's, it's a naked woman wearing a strap on. Yes. Like large if, strap on. Like if you'd suck it. And he liked Trayvon Diggs. Liked well, well, big, you watch tape like I do. Mm -hmm. Trayvon Diggs loves to bite on fakes. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> He's got to suck it now. Yeah, we've seen the all 22. He's got to suck it. He's got to suck it. It's kind of what he's known for. Yeah. Maybe it was one of those things where, like, the uh, picture wasn't in enlarged. No. Like, he could only was, see, he no, could only see, he's, like. He see the whole thing. No, but that's what the picture enlarged. I'm saying maybe he scrolled it on his feed. He's talking about the nipples. He just saw the nipples. It, sucking the nipples. It was like, like, if you'd suck it. Yeah, yeah. And then okay. You, and then you open to expand. That's good. You should be his lawyer. Dildo. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah, you'd be a much better lawyer than Chief Saholic's lawyer. I have him on my head. My okay, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to him. And then the last thing is, I there's another story about people yelling at golfers while they're trying to golf. John Rahm came out and said that uh, there were people yelling in his backswing for bets and everything. I, why doesn't golf just – everyone should get to, to yell all the time. Hey, golf, for some reason, it gets the same rules as tennis where you, right. you're not allowed to scream while the point's going on. Right. Let them concentrate. I, any other sport you can yell. And I also – Although Max did call that one guy a clown. Yeah, that guy. That guy is a clown for yelling during a birdie putt. Yeah, no, we're not talking about Max. This is John Rom. Yeah, for John Rom, if Rahm's it's anyone true. besides Max, yeah, feel free to yell. Uh, I also it just always irks me whenever it's like this new fad that uh, professional athletes are like this gambling thing is gonna is gonna be a problem with fans like bet. First of all, fans were betting before, just so you know. And second, if you like the TV deals, you should like gambling. Sorry about your parlay. Yeah, I mean it's it's kind of a if you if you're happy that the the TV deals are getting astronomical and the cap keep going keeps going up, gambling has a part of that. Yeah, let me ask you, what do you think is a bigger culprit for people screaming out at inappropriate times or yelling inappropriate things? Would you say it's gambling or would you say it's drinking? Mm. It's probably drinking. Probably drinking. But we're not talking about getting we're not rid of talking drinking. About that. Yes. Yeah. No, that's a good point. We love drinking and gambling. Yes. Let us just do it's, both. It's the In best. Peace. Yeah. Let us just enjoy Respon ourselves. Responsibly. Responsibly. Drinking and gambling. Right. But I like them both. Yes. And I, I like to do them all the time. I really I like don't really, the drinking, I could, the gambling part. Gambling is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It is fun. Um, oh, and I had one, I had one dude's rocked that I just wanted to share with you guys. There's a guy named Pug Winkler. So already dude's rock. Pug Winkler 
has a home in Nevada with 2,000 collegiate helmets on display. Ultimate dude's rock. I'm going to go out on a limb and say probably not married. Um, we'll have to find out, but he, uh, he, he, wait, all right, so the story, he needs to find a buyer for the Las Vegas property he, he's called home for 23 years to the tune of $1.15 million, and perhaps he can score a touchdown by passing it to another football diehard. Oh, he's, he's including these? He said he got into collecting by accident. And uh, he's got 50 years, nearly 2,000 collegiate football helmets later. Winkler's priceless collection has outgrown his 6,000 square. This guy rocks so hard. He literally has a home that l- can't keep his helmets. I'm looking at the pictures right now. Yeah, and he, has, he says, I have no wife to answer to. Yeah, of, yeah no shit. Um, I kind of want to buy this house. Yeah. Wait, but do they come with it? Yes. This house is awesome. He wants $1.5 million. That is a bargain. Oh, man. What a dude's rock. Fuck. Pug Winkler, too. How do you get the name Pug? That's a great name. He's got to be short. We should we should have a Pug. Got to be short like an O-line coach. Who should we call Pug? Uh, Evan could be Evan Pug. Evan, Evan could be Pug. Yeah, yeah. We might have to start calling Evan Pug. Um, one more thing. <laughs> Unfortunately, this might be the last episode of Part of My Take. Yeah, with, you guys. With everybody in this room still alive. You guys tease this, and I'm very, very. Oh, very yeah. Curious. So so Big Cat, myself, and Hank, we're all staying in a hotel. We're in New York right now, back at the old office, and they put us in a hotel right around the corner. It's a very nice hotel. I won't say the name of it. Um, I got into my room last night. First thing I did, it was pretty late. Got off my flight and to the hotel at about 1 a.m. I just went immediately to the bathroom to brush my teeth because it was, it was a business trip. It's like. Brush your teeth, go to sleep. That's all you're going to do tonight. Maybe jack off. Anyways, I go to brush my teeth, then I walk out to the living room, and there's a letter that's sitting on the desk in the living room of, or the main area of my hotel room. It's from the New York Department of Health. It says, this hotel has been experiencing an outbreak of Legionnaire's disease. And I had that note. I didn't read it. Yeah, so I read it. And I don't I, think I had it. And it said it, it listed all the. You guys things. are in suites. I'm just in a regular room. Oh, I wasn't I'm, in a, a suite. I'm in a very standard I room. I think they just don't a care about it. Normal size room. I. You know what? I tipped my housekeeper last time I stayed at that hotel. They probably remembered that. Hank, you probably didn't tip them. I have never stayed here before in my don't life. Get the notice. So it says all the things that you're not supposed to do. One of the things is don't brush your teeth. It Wait, says what? It says don't take a shower. Oh, I didn't. It, sa- it says if you're going to take a shower. I did both, twice. Because, because the mist from the water, the steam, when you inhale it, that's when you get the disease. It says instead, fill up a bucket with water and then stand in the shower and pour it over your head. Oh, my God. So I, yeah, so I did like a bucket shower this morning. You did it? You followed the rules? I, followed, I, don't, I don't know what Legionnaire's disease is. I don't want to get it. Man. You might look like it's kind of like a troop thing, right? So Hank's going to die. Is it contagious? Well, it's also in the AC units. Fuck. It's like 10% I blasted fatal. the AC, I brushed my teeth twice, and I took two showers. Two showers? Mm-hmm. Last night and today. I saw I saw Kate. Yesterday. I saw Kate earlier today, and she goes, yeah, I didn't know that it had that until afterwards, but I took two 30-minute long hot showers. At least she's not pregnant. Legionnaire's disease. People get sick when they breathe in small droplets of water, accidentally swallow water containing Legionella into the lungs. Uh-oh. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't sound spread good. from person to person. When I first saw it, I was like, sick, we're all going to get jacked up. Like, this is like a military disease that you get. Make, maybe lose a lot of body weight, get some six packs. Most people, many people exposed to the bacteria don't develop symptoms. Okay. Yeah, we're fine. Now, apparently, it's one of those diseases that's like almost entirely gone from planet Earth. I think there's like yeah, 20, for our hotel 20,000 cases in the United States each year, and we might get some of them. Jesus. I did uh, I did the the Hollywood workout today. I went to my old gym and sauna. Did not even go into the gym. Did sauna, steam, hot tub, shower. Yeah, if you sweat, that counts as a workout. The best. If you, as long as your body gets into sweat mode, you're burning calories. Yeah, I felt great coming out. All right, uh, let's do hot seat, cool throne, and then we'll get to our great interviews. Hot seat, cool throne is brought to you by our friends at Coors Light, our favorite beer in the world. Everyone thinks about the day they'll get to retire and enjoy the freedom that comes with it. But who says we have to wait decades before we get to kick back and chill out, take advantage of that free will, and spend the summer chilling like a retiree and pair those moments with Coors Light, the beer that's made to chill. It's the beer that's made to chill. Pair as well with a retired state of mind. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold, so you know when it's time to grab another. 
perfect for all your summer plans or lack thereof. No judgment here. PFT, what's your favorite thing about Coors Light? Uh, my favorite thing is Blue Mountains. My favorite thing is drinking Coors Light on a hot summer day, especially when you're watching daytime baseball. Mm-hmm. A daytime baseball Coors Light is different. Daytime baseball hits different. Coors Light, the best beer out there. Mountains on the cans and bottles turn blue when it's cold. So this summer, chill like you're retired. Go to CoorsLight.com right now slash take. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzy or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. We celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Thank you to Coors Light. We love Coors Light. We're going to drink some more Coors Light. It's almost football season. Coors Light. Oh, the best. What a pairing. Hank, hot seat, cool throne. Um, hot seat is Scooter Braun. Uh-oh. What would happen? He got dropped by Biebs. He got dropped by Ariana Grande. He got dropped by Adana Mazel, the frozen woman. Yeah, you nailed that one. Uh, I, I honestly only know her through the commercials, like the Geico commercial. Let it go. Yeah, Adina, Adina, Adina Menzel, Menzel, Adina sure. Menzel. Okay. So why is he getting dropped? I don't know. Like all at once, all these people dropped. Yeah, him? I mean, obviously, sounds the, like collusion. Yeah, the beef with with Taylor. I was doing a little bit of article before I. Uh, you were doing, you're a, little doing a little article. Little article. Took a little bit of reading took, an took article. A small hit of words. Don't hurt yourself, <laughs> Hank. And it sounds like he might just be, you know, switching up his role in the company. But the Swifties will have you think that all of his big name clients are dropping him. And I believe him. I've got, I've got that's a question. I, that's what I believe. Now, I, I, you know, I did, I did an article and realized I, he might just be, you know, I am a getting Swiftie. out of the representative business. I am a Swifty. I respect Taylor Swift. I want to say that on record for all the Swifties out there. I'm a Swift both veteran. Is Taylor Swift kind of a terrorist? She might be kind of a terrorist. It feels like she's got. I'll tell you what. She is either a cult leader or a terrorist, and she's very good at doing both, whichever one it is. So uh, anything that she does, I'm on her side for the record. I want none of the smoke from the Swifties. No, we're, we're going we're gonna to clip everything. Uh, is you, she's uh, ter- I, Taylor Swift a terrorist? Did you see the video? video of nobody her, uh, has done a better job of making millions and millions of dollars and still getting her fans to pretend that she's a victim than she has. Mm-hmm. She's very good at it and a great singer, great songwriter. Did you see the video of her at LBI? Yeah. That was the most insane thing. Yeah, of the they shut down the the entire street. Yeah, just because she was going out to dinner. Now, does she weaponize social media? Because we've been accused of that. I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I never said that. So then she's fine. She is a terrorist, but she's very good at. She's like the best terrorist to ever exist. Yeah, she. Do you think Taylor Swift? Do you think Taylor Swift could could successfully have a coup of the government? Yeah, for sure. Too. I actually do too. Imagine if there were a million Swifties, like a million twenty-five-year-old girls storming the Capitol. Yeah, I mean, well, she's got like it's like fifteen to forty, and it's guys too, and And eras. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Belichick loves her. You would even have yeah. It would be a situation where like, if you had the if she did a coup, and the U.S. Army was like, "Uh oh, what are we gonna do?" You know, there's a guy, there's a general who's about to enact, you know, martial order on. the Swifties, and then his daughter's like, Dad, don't do that. I love Taylor Swift. He's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be so easy. All she would have to do is like just accuse Joe Biden of being mean. Or falling asleep. Why are you so mean to me, Joe? And then her fan base would be like, honestly, Biden is toxic. Yeah. <laughs> she could swing everything. She's Facebook. She is. Yeah. Uh, okay. Good hot seat. Uh, I had another one. The Midwest. Heat Dome. Heat Dome. Heat Dome. I just told you about this. And I looked it up. I did another article. It's crazy. It's nuts. Heat dome is crazy. I, I just love the term heat dome. Yeah. I'm, I'm down to get some heat dome. The fact that there's no, looking at the map where there's no clouds whatsoever in the middle of the country is nuts. Mm-hmm. Heat dome. Heat dome, baby. I'm all, degrees. I'm the weather, all the weather's The weather's, global warming's been, been going off. Oh, you believe in it now. I've always believed in it. You don't believe in weather? I saw, I saw. Uh, but you don't believe in weather. I saw a trailer when I was a kid, when I was just a youth, for Inconvenient Truth, and I thought it was a sci-fi movie. And I was like, Mom, I want to go see this movie. And she was like, wow, I'm so, like, thank you for taking Henry, you finally showed And I went and watched it. I was like, what the fuck is this? You had to, you accidentally learned something. Yeah, I was pissed. That's Greta, you're queen? Ever since then, it's been like, this shit's been real, and I'm, I've been known about it. There's nothing worse than getting tricked into learning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Sucks. I was like, this movie looks sick. It's like going to a museum, and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, this it sucks. took me here. Come on. I got to learn. We, you get the, you get the uh, comp- audio companion. Mm-hmm. Just power through it. Walk right through it. But the Heat Dome, is, it's such a cool name, and I think it's probably going to suck to actually be in it. 
Yeah, it's probably like going to be deadly. Two days. They need to give it a less cool name. It's like yeah. when they say the the polar vortex. Yeah, or thunder snow. Thunder snow, the thunder quake. Yeah. Like, I want to be involved in something called the heat dome. It's like Gabrielle Union, Chicago handshake meme heat dome. Heat dome. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, then my cool throne is Baker Mayfield. Oh, yeah. to be my, one took starter. My cool starter. Oh, uh, ba- one. I got another one. Baker Haram is the fan base for Baker. Uh, but I'm. Listen, did anybody think that Kyle Trask was going to win it? Uh, Stephen no. Che. He did? Well, when Tom Brady retired for like two months, he was like, Kyle Trask really is something. He's, he's next up. I, I put a little future on Baker to win comeback player of the year. And I, for whatever reason, I just think that uh, maybe it's that game that he had on, uh, was it Christmas? Yeah. The Christmas game sold me. It's like, okay, if this guy can play that good with two days' notice, imagine what he can do with the entire offseason. Baker also is Hungry Dogs Run Faster because I saw an article that he is has to sue some of his family members who mismanaged some of his funds. He's suing, I think it's an investment firm or a financial services firm, and his dad and brother both work for that firm. Right. So I don't know. I, it's going to be an ugly lawsuit probably. But if you're, if you're playing for money, like if he – if Yeah. I hope it didn't happen. I We like Baker Mayfield. I hope – his money wasn't wiped away, but if it were, that would be a vote for Baker to ball out this year. Yeah, I I don't know. Maybe it's just like when he played for the Browns, they haven't had a good quarterback in a while. He was pretty good for them. I feel like he got used by the Browns. Yeah. They traded him for a rapist. Mm-hmm. I got a cool throw for you if you need it. Uh, yeah, I'll take it in just a second. Okay. Uh, actually, do you have a hot seat for me? <laughs> I have a cool throne. Uh, we can spin it. Stephen A. Smith. Hot seat is bonks because uh, the bonk dog died. So what? R.I.P. I think he might have also been the the Doge going dog. Oh, fuck. Chooms, Chooms. We lost Lolita two days ago. I know. It's it's sad. Chooms not going to win a Super Bowl. Motherfucker. Ever. Um. So that I guess that's my hot seat. My cool throne. No, my hot seat is, is Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. So Jim Harbaugh, uh, Michigan self imposed a three game suspension on him. Genius. Genius move. So he misses all the out-of-conference games, gets back for a get-right game against Rutgers. And so uh, they're going to try to hope that this is going to resolve things. I don't know how how the math works on this because it seemed like the NCAA and Michigan came to a handshake agreement on four games. And for next year, right? For next season? Oh, it's for this year. It's for this season. And they walked away. And then they walked away from the table, and then Michigan was like, okay, tell you what, you pressed our hand, we'll go as far as three games. Well... I mean, it would, I would guess, and I'm going to look it up. Uh, let's see. So, three games, who they're, they're playing like no one. It's at all the out-of-conference stuff. Okay, <clears throat> this is interesting. Michigan schedule in 2024. Week, week one, Fresno State Bulldogs. Week two, Texas Longhorns. Interesting. So, that might have been why. Interesting. So, so they're going to say, hey, you said four. All right, we did three. We'll attack on another. Smart by him because he doesn't want to. Next year, he would miss a te- the Texas game. He doesn't want to do that. Yeah. So it was like it's when you're looking at the draft trade chart, four draft picks next year equals three draft picks this year. It was genius by him. It was yes. smart move by Michigan. Yes. Um, so my cool throne is Miley Cyrus. Oh, Miley's on the cool throne. The day the bonk dog bonk died. Dog is the day that, now I'm free not, to. Yeah, he's not I'm free to be horny. Him. I can let it, I can let all the horniness out because I've I've no repercussions. He can't balk me anymore, bitches. Miley's back. She's going to play at the Super Bowl probably in Allegiant Stadium, which is the sexiest stadium in the world. It's going to be the most boner-inducing halftime show of all time. We can only hope and pray that Justin Timberlake gets out there and there's another Janet Jackson scenario. Mm-hmm. Or no, well, we refer to that as a Billy Football Max Delente. Oh yeah, yeah, exposing. That's, that's exposing. the more famous, the more famous recent incident. Most famous recent nipple. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Miley's going to rock it. I mean, she's a great performer. When she performed before the Final Four a couple years ago, that's where the whole bonk thing started. I really got into Miley Cyrus, and she's back. And Miley's a bad bitch, and I can't wait for her to just stunt on every hoe that's watching. I am very excited for this as well. She's great. She's yeah, a she's, she's a great, great performer. Great, great performer. Also, did you guys see the Las Vegas Eye thing? They didn't plan for rain. No big eyeball. Oh, you're talking like, about, you're talking about the globe. Globe. Yeah. Yeah. It, it like malfunctioned. Oh, in the hurricane. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Maybe it maybe it suicided itself because Hillary was in town. Yeah, that's probably true. She knows too much. The the seeing eye knows too much. All right, my hot seat is Ted Cruz because Ted Cruz fell for the oldest trick in the book. I tweeted out the picture of the shark on the highway and was like, friend of friend of mine from L.A. sent me this picture of the 405. 
Went to sleep, nothing of it. Next day, Ted Cruz just quote tweeted and said, holy crap. And then he doubled down, which you know that he actually got got because he said, it turns out this might be a joke, but it is L.A., so it could have happened. Yeah, that's my favorite response. Is, <laughs> well, the fact that I believe that it could have been true tells you everything you need to know. Right. It's all things considered better behavior from Ted Cruz on Twitter than liking incest porn on 9-11. That's true. But, yeah, it was good it's to get. It, it, was, it was funny because I didn't think that there would be a, a TMZ article talking about it calling me Bar- Barstool Sports Jokester. Mm-hmm. Dan Katz. You are a jokester. I'm a jokester. I do like to joke around. But uh yeah, that was that was funny. And then my cool throne is uh Chief Saholic because he has the greatest lawyer of all time. So Chief Saholic, you obviously know his whole story, the the bank robbing uh Chiefs fan. Uh he has a lawyer who had a statement yesterday in front of the courthouse. He said this is not Chief Saholic's last drive. He believes, and we believe, that when the final whistle blows and all the facts are known, that he's going to be redeemed in the eyes of this community, in the eyes of his fans, in the eyes of Chief's kingdom. That He's going to win. All right, so I, I, saw, I saw the video of the lawyer saying this, and my first reaction was, this sounds like something that an attorney who wears a cowboy hat would say. Yes. I saw the video of him. This guy's a nerd. This guy is this guy's not, nerd. not a cool attorney, not a football guy. I have a sneaking suspicion that that statement was actually written by Chief Saholic. Yeah. And it was like, this is the statement I want you to put out. I'm a football guy through and through. Just make all the football metaphors and hope that a jury of my peers... Where is he being charged? Do we know? Uh, Oklahoma, maybe? Yeah, everybody on that jury is a football fan. Probably Facts. half Cowboys, half Chiefs fan. They probably pretend that they're Chiefs fans because they're better this year. Uh, but yeah, it sound, this sounds to me like this has Chief Saholic's fingerprints all over it, which are on file with the yes. FBI. I, I, listen, if this lawyer just goes in and just does football analogies the entire time, they're going to win this case. Oh, for sure. Like, that is what people understand. Yeah. And you just have it, maybe Your even- Honor, put, he went into the bank and he took what the defense gave him. Yes, he read He read the defense, he saw that they were, uh, you know, cover zero, and he, he went and took it. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Right? He, if he rolls out just turf- on the like and does his whole entire proceedings on turf. Mm-hmm. These are these are things that put on a helmet. Like we would absolutely, I, if I were a juror, I'd be like, you can't, you can't put this guy in jail before football season. Listen, just because the man liked to operate out of the pistol <laughs> doesn't mean that he should be in prison. Okay, free chiefs holic, but maybe not because he probably did it. Uh, all he right, should be handcuffing running backs in fantasy football. Not <laughs> diehard super fans. <laughs> oh, Chiefs of Holic. Uh, what a story. All right, let's get to our interviews. Uh, first up, we have our good friend Tony Scheffler. It's been a while since he's been on, but any old school AWL knows he is one of our favorite guests. And it's brought to you by our friends at BIC. We've all had enough of the things that clutter our lives, whether it's your coworkers making you feel guilty for taking a vacation or losing the last leg of your parlay that never loses. Okay, Uh, it's time we get rid of the things that are clogging up our lives. Thanks to Bic Easy Rinse Razors, you can say goodbye to at least one major frustration in your routine. Those annoying hairs that clog your razor because after years of development, Bic solved the clog with its new anti-clog technology. No more banging your razor against the sink or spending an eternity running it underwater. It just rinses right through. So whether you're shaving a soul patch, trimming your beard, or shaving it all, now you can ditch the clog, free yourself, and start living a less clogged life with Bic Easy Rinse, available at retailers nationwide. And for a limited time, get 20% off your next purchase on Amazon with code 20PMT. I use the Bic Easy Rinse during Grit Week, and it was the cleanest shave I've ever had. So say goodbye to things clogging up your life with Bic Easy Rinse Razors. They are patented anti-clogging technology all shave no clog where else are you going to get that it's patented try Bic easy rinse available at retailers nationwide and for a limited time get 20 percent off your next purchase on amazon using code 20 pmt they're the best razors in the world Bic easy rinse all uh all shave no clog anti-clogging technology you know it works so try Bic easy rinse available at retailers nationwide and for a limited time get 20 percent off your next purchase on amazon using code 20 PMT. Okay, we now welcome on one of our favorite recurring guests, old school, old school. Uh, it is Tony Scheffler, former Detroit Lion, former Denver Bronco, friend of the program. We were thinking about it. We're like, we're going through Michigan. We got to, we got to talk to Tony because these are my favorite interviews. The guys who've been with us forever, the guys that known us forever, and also we wanted to just get an update on Scout the Cat. 
Yep. Uh, won't see me on Mount Rushmore, but that's okay. Oh, no. That's okay. Uh, not worthy. Yes, that's a miss. Yeah, that was a it's, miss. Were you an honorable mention? No, nah, I mean, it's 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 what it is at this point. <laughs> um, now I'm here. Leg room is limited under this thing. <laughs> uh, but we just keep carrying on. It's time to start making some new stories. Yes. I mean, uh, yes. I do want to know. You can only go so far with the basketball game and scout the cat. And Wait, what basketball, Wait, what basketball game are you talking about? <laughs> Uh, just check my Wikipedia. <laughs> I want to know about Scott the Cat, though. Not how he's doing, but more specifically, last time we hung out with you, we played around of golf. I beat you on a hole, and you had to buy $200 worth of, of mice for Scott the Cat. Correct. Did you ever do that? Did you ever I pay up? Uh, he kills enough mice. Okay. So he's still alive. Scout is uh, He's going to turn 9 August 9th. That's okay. Scout. Okay. Um, he's alive and well. Uh, he doesn't like a thunderstorm. Okay, so what a pussy. He'll be at the front door uh, uh, when a storm's coming. Does he still have his nuts? Uh, no nuts. Oh, no? We, okay. saw, we saw an orange uh, barn cat the other day with giant nuts. It was crazy. Actually, I'm a cat guy now. Uh, really? That's news. That's breaking news. Oh, that is breaking news. Uh, Sweet, you don't have any dogs. We got this new cat. Uh, they call it a Maine Coon. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, Marlon's man has Looking to breed some cats. Are you serious? Yeah, 10 years out. Ten years out of the league, it's time to move on. <laughs> it's a pretty it's, cat. It's time to move on and make some money. And uh, here we are. How do you uh, Miso cats? Mo? They're calling him the kids. Miso, Miso Mo, Mo is the name of the cat, and he's scary. He's scary looking. How do you breed a cat? You just put a cat in a room with another I cat. I think that's how you do it. We're gonna find out. It's wait. So you have two. Uh, we're still looking for. Uh, the, do you call it a bitch? A yeah, female. Yeah, yeah sure. a female a bitch. bitch pussy. Uh, we're wait, Maine Coon cats. Maine Coon. They are huge. Huge. Right? How big is he? Uh, and he's he's moving through the house like he's ready to, to kill anything. Okay. So I'm a little bit worried. Okay. Uh, and they have the, the pointy ears thing? Do, yeah. Yeah, like Bob. And they almost. look, yeah, they, they, they're they like like very thick. Correct. Black. Very. We're looking, yeah, to, yeah. we're looking to breed. Okay. I, I like Big Cat's so, right, though. Marlon's man has an extensive selection. Marlon's man. He yeah. has a ton of main so He can cats. sell me a female. I think yes. he's got nine. It's it's actually okay. gross when he has them all like around him and stuff. Okay, I like where where I'm headed in the okay, same direction yeah, yeah. as Marlon's man. What's the market for a Maine Coon? Uh, thirty five hundred, four grand a piece. Is that? Is, oh, are you being nine? serious? Yeah, are you that up. hard up for money? <laughs> it's it's been a struggle <laughs> post uh, post NFL. Well, you have your you, you have your pension. The NFL always takes care of their retirement. Uh, you players. don't get that until you're what fifty five. Is that true? Correct. Oh, uh, we're we're looking to make some moves. Okay. Um, I like that. And that's kind of where we're at right now. So, uh, yeah, the animals are, are well. The family's good. Uh, still coaching girls hoop. Mm -hmm. uh, 50, 59 and 8? 58 and 9, but nobody's counting. I'm I'm taking away the game that I tried to give your team a pump up and came to the to, to the Chelsea High School, and they lost. And our 40. season season ended. Yeah, so that, that one's on me. I'm going to take that one off your record. Um. So, yeah, so 58 and 8. Okay. But, again, nobody's counting. And uh, three years in. I'd like to get to 100 here in the next couple, and we'll see. We'll see what happens. Have you been ejected from a game? Uh, I have not. I was ejected from a, uh, a middle school softball game a couple okay. weeks ago. Okay, what, what happened? happened? Uh, things were said. Yeah, things were said a week week prior by an ump, and it kind of carried oh, over so the next week. The ump started it. Correct. Uh -huh. um, and you know, you can't get. You shouldn't be able to get ejected for a carryover call. Uh, we were losing two nothing. All I know is I heard a lot of cheers once I was over by the swings. I I found a line of vision to the field. Uh, that's kind of your the kids one and you got uh, ejected as a fan as a coach. Yeah. Oh, oh as a coach. okay, that's okay. Coach. That's uh, kind of your safe space when things go wrong. You go sit on the swing. Correct. Like the basketball. Um, couple of technicals in in basketball, but no, I have not been ejected thankfully. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just we're just trying to figure it out. You know, chasing wins, looking oh. for dubs. You know. What yeah. kind of offense do you run? Uh, we're pretty wide open. We got we got really good athletes. So we're. Uh, we're five out, four out, dribble drive, old Memphis D Rose offense. Oh, I like that. Uh, put pressure on the rim, mm -hmm. uh, circle behind, rim cut. Mm -hmm. You make just, sure that they be go, athletic. You make sure they go to class. Uh, really lucky in that regard. The kids are all about four point oh. Okay. Uh, pretty lucky with with who I got. Okay. So uh, that's good. The standard. Our is star standard. point guard is just committed to Marquette. Oh, um, yep. So she'll be going there after next year. That's you guys start serious? putting jerseys behind you, like like yeah. Coach Cal in his basement of guys that go to the NBA. We're looking to beef it up. We're looking to beef it up. Uh, see if we can get our, you know, BC's fighting for us on Twitter. I did. I, uh, I got in a fight with a uh, uh, girls high school, Michigan girls high school beat reporter because they were saying that uh, Tony's team ran up the score. Did you run up the score? We did not. Uh, no, you they know, just we're here to win. 
Or, and it was against a rival. Correct. So that I mean, that Wait, should not count. It's it's like that that picture of Kobe Bryant and his team that he coached, where they got beat one year by like a few yes. points, and then the next year they came back and won a hundred to yes. nine or something. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, we play all the kids. Um, you got that Mamba mentality. And yeah, and we just we we play hard. I say empty the tank is what I tell them. Empty yeah. the tank. Okay. Against a rival, you should not complain about running up the score. And uh, we play the right way. Uh, don't get it twisted, but yeah, it's uh, there's a time and a place for uh, you know being a dog. Yeah. You guys press. <laughs> Uh, not too often. You should look. I find that the press takes away from our offense, our our energy and our our uh, focus, precision, yeah. focus on offense. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that makes we don't sense. we don't do it a ton. What about um? So how many years out are you? Ten. This is going to be ten. I just looked. It's like October of thirteen. Right after. Yeah, we're going on game. ten years, man. Crazy. Yeah. Uh do you miss it? Uh, I miss the people. I miss stuff like this. Uh, doing this kind of thing. We daily. can do this anytime you Radio want. Radio shows. Uh, I miss the guys in the locker room. Uh, I don't miss the fame or the money or anything like that. That mm. stuff kind of, that's fleeting. You had a lot of that. That's behind me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of what? <laughs> fame. Yeah. Well, when we got to Detroit, it was, well, how can we get the ball to Calvin? You are, I mean, you were a hometown <laughs> hero when you were on the Lions. Yeah. Uh, Denver, Denver was nasty. Uh, had a lot of fun, a lot of success. And then we got here and, you know, it was a struggle being at home and, and a, a totally different feel. So yeah. wait, is that a is that a thing that you could definitely notice? Like we always hear about it, you know, like hometown guys playing for their teams. Is it way more pressure? Yeah, uh, a lot more family, a lot more logistical things you don't have to worry about. Uh, getting pulled in every which way, people asking you to do stuff. Uh, when you go to the West Coast in Denver from here, you know, I didn't really have any distractions. Yeah, it was yeah. just kind of rage. Did you play with uh, with Jake Plummer? Oh yeah, yep. He Jake, was our starting quarterback my my rookie year. Jake is awesome. Jake the Snake. I actually just saw player. him, uh, I don't know, several months ago at a card show. Yeah. Uh-huh. What a dog. That Tony's is. the you way should we go to Jake on the show. You yeah. should go to yeah. his mushroom Slip farm. BC. Uh, Jake's Jake's phone phone number. Yeah, and he's the best. Him and Rod Smith, two of the all time all time dudes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You gotta I, get Rod Smith on when you're out west. Have yes. Have you what been to his mushroom farm? I have not. It's great. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah, it was interesting uh, playing playing with Jake and. And Cutler was obviously the first round pick with me that year. Just to- two totally different humans. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, pretty interesting. You played for McDaniel's too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So you played with Tebow. How'd about- you like that? You- yeah, let's talk about McDaniel's. <laughs> what ha- what happened between you two? Uh, there's a do lot you- of history there. Do you think he's going to well, be you successful? Could ask Brandon Marshall, that question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you think he has he the was- same view on Josh as I do. I do- think he probably has the same view on Josh as a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah not a fan. Yeah, that's all. What about Tebow though? No, I just missed him. I yeah, because he got – Josh traded yeah. Tony Myself and, and B. Jay. Marsh demanded to get out of there. Yeah. Uh, he mm-hmm. traded Jay right when he got the job, basically. Yeah. Pretty much cleaned house mm-hmm. on a really high-caliber offense. He implemented the Patriot way, though. It was crazy. Yep, yep. Brought guys in. Uh, Wait, so were you on the Broncos team that started 6-0 and that year? With we his first year? Yep. And Kyle, Kyle Orton, Orton. Yeah, the, the best. Helm. The best. What a dog. I love Kyle Orton. What a dog. Uh, you tidy put, whitey guy. You put me on to Kyle tidy Orton's whitey. Instagram, which I don't want to blow up because I think it is private, but he's let me in, and it's just it's just exactly what you expect. A lot of big fish being Just caught. fishing uh-huh. pictures. It's yeah. all fishing. It's all he does. Fish. I love it. His daughter's a, a great equestrian. Yeah. Yeah. Athlete, uh, love it, Kyle Orton, man. It's so, the best. What, what year is that? Orton story. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's go. go, let's go. Um, so we would go out and party, you know, downtown, and he was one of the only guys that lived in uh, Cherry Creek, which is between the facility and downtown Denver. Most of us all live by the facility, right? Well, he was a little, he was a red wine guy, a little high, you know. Mm-hmm. So he uh, he stayed close to downtown. Well, every time we came home, you know, when the bars let out. We would find our way at Orton's house and just give his windows hell or his front door, <laughs> and then we we'd scatter and he'd come out whitey tidy. <laughs> he would, you know, looking looking for us. And man, next day at facility, oh, someone's knocking on my doors, my windows at 3 a.m. last night. And man, it went on and on. Like talk about a good dude, uh, Brandon Stokely. Yes, uh, was in that circle with Orton, me and and Stoke. Man, what a dude. Uh, Matt Prater was there. Man, oh, man, yeah. He's still going. You're 17. Yeah. yeah. You want to talk about a dude. Matt Prater is a dude. Yeah. Uh, which is rare for a leg. kicker because yes. you you're not a fan of kickers. No, not a fan. Dorks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Huge <laughs> dorks. Tony always texts whenever oh. a kicker misses a kick. He's like, fucking kicker. Oh. He's like he's like a ninja. Like, Matt it can't Prater, be that hard to make a field not goal. Not a dork. Not a dork. <laughs> so what, what year was that? 2010 when the Broncos started 6-0? 
Uh, must have been I, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, right. two thousand nine. It'll, it'll warm your heart to know there's a, a bar in Austin. I think it's called the Mean Eyed Cat. And when you go to the bathroom, you there's like markers, and you like write on the wall. There's a giant uh, message on the bathroom. I forget. Maybe it's over the sink. It says, "Never forget the two thousand nine Denver Broncos started six and zero and didn't make yeah, playoffs. And did, make well, playoffs. they didn't include that. They just want to remember that, it, that that was a great time for Broncos fans. Uh, we had a game again uh, at Cincinnati where. We hit on a four goes. A got ball gets tipped. Brandon Stokely catches it, and kind of just lollygags in the end zone to go up. Um, they put out the safe team at the end. I'm free safety. Oh, and on uh, the hail mary play, yeah. like Gronk. And what happens? Interception. Carson Palmer. You think that you, ball? That wait, ball? You yes, it? that ball is front I center. Did you have a pick? I got a pick. That's oh, awesome. Did you return cool. it? If you go go look at the ball card. It's on there. Did you try oh. to run it back? I did. And uh, Brian Dawkins sideswiped me. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Dawkins was was having none of it. <laughs> I what didn't a know mean you had guy. A pick. Ball hawk though. That's Ball hawk. Awesome. So you've played? Have you played in only one down on defense? Uh, no, I was in all throughout my years as a free safety on the prevent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, end of game, end of half situations. That's pretty sick though. Like oh, yeah. you, you ended your career with how many? I got the ball, a bunch of touchdowns, up. and interceptions. Yep, one pick I got. Love it. How many touchdowns? I don't know. Was it like twenty? I don't know. Twenty three. The, the 23, best. Twenty three. <laughs> the best was the Tampa one with the sword. One of the greatest uh, touchdown celebrations. Back when it was like celebrations weren't happening right. that often. He did the sword. Yeah. Yeah. So myself and Nate Burleson, man, we used to clown in practice. It, it just got us through practice. Yeah. We'd celebrate everything. Uh, <laughs> five yard hitches. We'd celebrate. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd point up to the cameras, dance to the cameras, all kinds of stuff, and that it just kind of kept rolling. And, it, and really that year in 2011, it became our, our mantra, man. It was just like a screw everybody type of mentality. Yeah. You know? The Lions made it to the point. I wanted to say a different word there, but I'm a school pitch. district yeah, employee. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's I got to get to that point where, I don't know, there's a crossroads coming, you know? Right. Where you can't you can't swear because you're a district employee. So maybe you become a college coach. Yeah, something. Something. But uh, Western Michigan, I college love, coach. Love where I'm at. But yeah, that's... Uh, that team had a, a persona where it was we're gonna dance today mm -hmm. type of mentality, and uh, and we had Sue on the other side getting 15 yard penalties, and and then uh, Bannon Bosch with his red red contacts. Yeah, uh, it was kind of a wild team, man. Uh, Dom yeah. Riola, like look out. Oh, he's he, he's, he's coming like, for your knees. Yeah. It's like what a ball player. Because you played on on one of the only Lions teams in recent memory to have right. real success. What yeah. what's Detroit like when the team? Oh, it's awesome, ball? man. Alive, man. We would go, we would go around and, and shake hands after games to the fans. It was what an experience, you know. It, coming from a, a kid, you know, I was a, I grew up here, uh, you know, at the Silverdome, Barry Sanders, right. And then even with Barry, not a lot of winning, you know. So right. it was awesome. It was awesome to be a part of that. No what, doubt. So um, I think we've we've gotten the take on this from Jim Harbaugh's perspective. I don't know. We never had Jim Schwartz on, right? No. So. You were on that team, the Jim Schwartz, Jim Harbaugh, when they went uh, nipple to nipple. Nipples. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right here. And Bob Lang broke it up. Yep, right next to you. That's was, such they a were, great uh, costume. Wiener, show. wiener. It was, wiener, like wiener. A, it was like a, you pat me on the back too hard, I'm going to pat you on the back uh, a little like bit harder. Like a couple of peacocks out, uh, yeah. out in the barnyard. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? what, so, well. so what happened when you get back to the locker room was Jim Schwartz <sighs> riled, like, whoa. Just riled up. <laughs> riled up. And, uh, and that's the type of coach you want to play for. Yeah. Uh, a guy that. We'll go toe to toe with the other head coach. Yeah. And I think uh, of myself as when I coach, uh, I have my team's back, I'm loyal, and like don't mess with my team. And Jim Schwartz was that way. Uh, I really enjoyed playing for Jim. Is he your favorite coach? Um, Shanny, Mike Shanny, 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 Shanny yeah. bed, yeah. Shanny, yeah, Shanny was that, team parties. Like it was different. It was a different time. Yeah. You know, I think my rookie year was the last year you were allowed alcohol on the plane. Uh, you would get. You get back from the game and there'd be ten beers sitting on every seat. Yeah, uh, it was just a different time, man. Like, uh, team parties, you know, when you made made the team, the final roster, casino night at, at Shanahan's mansion, mm -hmm. like just stuff like that that just doesn't happen anymore with camera phones and everything else. Did Joshua Daniels do like a pizza? Party Nothing, or man. Nothing. Forty-five minutes late for every bus. Uh, we're not gonna go there. Come on. <laughs> no, I mean, just, I'm, just, just, I'm just getting over it. Give me, Come on. Give me, Sounds like you're over give it. Me one, Come on. Give me one one Josh McDaniel story. Man, I just I don't know if I could find one, man. It's do the do your job maybe is the worst. It just because that's a patriot mantra, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you know overnight, you know you're a three year vet on a team, and overnight you've got do your job written on every wall, and you know it's written on that other wall 
on the East Coast. That's won Super Bowl. It's just kind of it's just kind of awkward from the start. Right. Yeah. So when the when the Lions hired Matt Patricia, we were like, oh no, I've seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, but success, right? I mean, they've had success. So yeah. it's uh, at the end of the day, like you want to knock somebody, but they. He had a lot of success. I'm convinced that Belichick just sends a lot of rings. He sends his assistants out to be head coaches at other teams just to fuck those programs right? up and then bring them back. He's in. that far ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you ever think of that? Like, uh, like Michael Jordan was he? You know, the last dance was was Michael Jordan in the moment thinking 10, 15 years ahead. Do you think that that people are that smart and that? I magical? think he was always thinking ahead with his shoes and stuff, like like the Nike brand and everything. Is knowing Bill Belichick that. I wouldn't Insane. put it past him. I wouldn't put it past him. Not Bill, yeah. No, I wouldn't put it past him. I, would you – I'd have to imagine you see Dan Campbell, you're like, that's a guy I'd want to play for. Right. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? He's like just – Former a, player, uh, just knows the grind, knows knows what it takes. Um, and I've been I've been with him from day one. Like, he's going to figure it out. Like, the guys are going to play for him. Right. And uh, they're starting to figure it out, man. The team plays hard. I was stupid and thought that the, he might be losing the team when they started, like, one and six. Yeah. But it's clear that he like, – Well, remember when your boy uh, locally, Mike Valeni, on 97-1, yeah. was, was dogging him. Yeah. Wanted him out. Yeah. And now, you know, it's – Well, Mike Valeni is – so he's, he's a, a local, local yeah. Detroit uh, radio guy, and he is – so good at his rants that I'll tune in and like for like he'll be ranting about Michigan State, which I don't care about, mm -hmm. and I'll watch it. That's the sign of someone who's good at their right. job. Uh, so Tony Tony put me on. He's like, you gotta listen to this guy. He would go after Harbaugh hard, hard, hard. Just uh, you know, I grew up AM talk radio with my dad, and that's all I really listened to my whole life. So yeah, Valani early on was, you know, and now the now fame, he's realizing yeah, it's kind of more calculated, but yeah. Early on, he he had some rants, didn't he? Yeah, it's he's kinda, a Michigan State guy. Yeah, it's crazy because if you're if you're a good sports talk radio host, you can always smash the fire the head coach button. Oh, if you yeah. ever want to get ratings, just be the first person to turn on a guy. Yeah, and there, like the, the phones will be lit up. Yeah. How hot is it in here? It's, it's hot. hot. It's hot. It's, uh, are we gonna like take our shirts off? At this point, or? <laughs> We've done that before. We're gonna we'll get a shave. I well, seen. I, I went to the bathroom back there. There's 47 yeah. Bic razors on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Like, what are we doing Sponsors with the Bic we're razors? Everywhere. We're smooth. Yeah. yeah, it's the smoothest podcast in North America. Yeah. No well, pubes on the boys. I, I, we, we are gonna put on the AC in a second. I had one last question for you. Are you gonna coach football at any point? Good question. You know what? Uh, man, starting to get the itch. To yeah. Be honest. Uh, Why didn't you when you got out? <sighs> I was just so tired of football, man. I was, it was over. Like it was, you know, I just didn't want anything to do with it. Um, but now that I'm into coaching and, uh, and really, really enjoying competing again um, at the high school level, man, I, I'm starting to get the itch. I don't know what it, what it would be, but uh, our school, Chelsea High School, won a state championship a couple years ago uh, with a new head coach who I've become pretty good friends with, Josh Lucas. Shout out, Josh Lucas. Shout, Shout out, Josh, Josh Lucas. Lucas. What a dog. What a dog. What a dog. Dog. Uh, dog. Dog. Man, we're trying to start this quarterback club. Todd Starkey, well, we're here, my boys here. Uh, Todd, start Todd Starkey. We're just trying. Dog. We're. Uh, I'm into it, man. My daughter's dating a wide receiver. Dog. Okay. Shout out, Jimmy Shikatano. <laughs> Shout out uh, Jimmy Shikatano. <laughs> shout out uh, junior wide receiver you shout Chelsea out your, Bulldogs. Your daughter's boyfriend. Yeah, I, okay. need a big year I, don't like, I like that. Like as a dad, yeah. you're, you're letting him know you're there. Out of him, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it's been fun. Like going to practices and and watching these because you see you see stuff differently. Right. You know? Are you doing like the the prom picture where you're standing next to him holding a loaded shotgun? No. <laughs> see, I'm not. I'm not that dude. I'm not that dad. Because I I experienced those dads and I yeah. nah no nah. no. You know what we, you should do? You should get your start coaching football. Coaching the girls. Do you guys have like a powder puff game? We do. Coach we the do. powder puff team. Yep. Um, Wait, have they asked you though? I'm sure they've asked you. Like, hey, you want to? Yeah, the coach? girls ask a few questions here and there about, uh, but they're their own. They have the boys' high schoolers coach the girls in the podcast. No, but what, no, I'm saying the the football coach has he asked you to come out? And not directly. He has not directly asked me. Um, so it's Josh Lucas. Yeah. So that's a mistake on his. Why part, don't you or? ask? We're gonna put the pressure on. Tony's ready. Just hey, wait, ask. Wait, it's like, it's hey. actually unbelievable. I haven't been asked, but yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a whole other <laughs> that's a whole other topic for another yeah. day. Um, uh, coach Lucas, I'm asking. My friend Tony Shuffler likes you as more than a friend. He likes you as a coach. Do you like him? Check yes. Just right. give Tony a fucking call. Right. Um, yeah. So the answer, long answer is, I think I'm almost there to where almost I there. I, I want to get back into the game. I it's love a, it. And Dan Campbell told you it's the greatest game. It's yeah, the greatest it team game. Um, it has it all, man. It has it all, and I don't regret anything, man. I just I really enjoyed uh, my time in the NFL um, and meeting guys like you and, and doing stuff like this. Like this, 
This is unbelievable, man. Yeah. That's what life's all Playing about. Just keep going. In your driveway? Day to day. Dude. <laughs> but why? Why do you do that? <laughs> listen. Listen. Now's the, the time. I, the one listen, time I felt time. really bad was when you were, when you got cut by the Lions, and then you were still a couple teams uh, poked around, and you said you got picked up. I think it was actually in Washington, right? You got picked up by, uh, like, one of the, you know, assistants on the team from the airport, and he was, like, driving you and was like, hey. I saw you versus Big Cat and Dave, and you're like, God damn it, I got to get out of here. I don't know how you remember that. But yes. <laughs> oh, I mean, it made me laugh. <laughs> um, at some point, there needs something needs to happen. We should do there a rematch. There needs to be Back, a sequel, yeah. something. Yeah. You don't want that high-low offense. Man, we need Hank running the camera, uh-huh. just yep. like it was. Yep. Run the yeah, exact one camera. I know, you he, your I know he's not Hank's all big time now, and <laughs> yeah. he doesn't touch cameras or anything. <laughs> but we it's need to contract. we need to run it back. We need your kids to awkwardly come in at one point, you shuffle them into the house, being like, Daddy's getting his ass whooped by two bloggers. What's your strategy going to be next time? <laughs> you got to switch something up. Uh, just more ball pressure, I think. Okay. Um, I let him high-low me, and I, I just <laughs> didn't pick a side. Uh-huh. Uh, I think... <laughs> And we get into a fair set of rules to start the game. Dave's never shot How many timeouts are allowed? <laughs> Unlimited. <laughs> um, Unlimited. <laughs> there's a lot of things that need to be discussed beforehand, and I don't know if Dave would like to go down that road again. It's but very, it's very I'm funny. I'm sick and tired. <laughs> Of talking about it's very yeah. funny. Like, like Big Cat and Dave keep running up the score on you, bring it up, spiking the football. It was a two on one basketball yeah. game, yeah. and, and we, we barely won. won. And I had a big lead, as you'll yeah. read in the Wikipedia. Yeah. If you go to my career, it's the last thing. Yeah, uh, he, uh, you know, Tony Shuffler had a big lead. Uh, Del Curry uh, yeah, so says I, it was one of the greatest shooting. Uh, it says expedition. Yeah, I believe the word himself. exhibition. I, I was actually reading that earlier. It does sound like something Trump would write about a basketball game that he won. Dave went in and wrote it. Yeah. Let's see. It it is. Hang so on, it it's up. a it's a thing that I'm I'm you know how many times can you do PMT and talk about the same basketball game? That's I know true. it's I know it's I, a, me a legendary video. Personally, a, infinity. And I can do it. Infinity there's a lot times. of quotes in there if you watch it again. Um, it is a quintessential old bar stool video. Fat where, Dave's where, yeah. skinny. Skin, yeah, I was skinnier than skinny Dave. BC. Yeah. Uh, it's. People are like, oh, I miss that parcel. It's like, we literally just called you. I was like, hey, we're in town. You want to, like, do something? And and we just showed up to your house, and Hank had one camera. We just started playing two on one. <laughs> early, okay, early. Wikipedia. But if you're having a bad day, t- turn that on and watch Dave's jump shot. On yes. September 28, 2013, Scheffler competed in a two on one basketball game versus Dave Portnoy and Daniel Big, Big Cat Cats of Barstool Sports. Despite Scheffler having a big lead the entire game, Portnoy's hot shooting earned the Barstool bloggers a comeback 11-10 to 10 victory. Famous NBA father, that's disrespectful, famous NBA father, Del Curry, would later say it was the greatest shooting expedition he's ever seen. After the loss, an irate Scheffler refused to shake hands and was last seen <laughs> punting the, the basketball into a dense forest. <laughs> Facts. Facts. There was a lot in between that yeah. I didn't agree with. Yeah. That is, is my point. Of the it wasn't that dense of a forest. Yes. yes. And um, Yeah, we'll come up with something new. But it's always great to have you on. Hey, man. You're I the best. Seeing you guys. Yeah. Uh, it, we're to the point where it's it's soggy in this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, yeah let, let's, let's let's cut this. Tony, uh, shout out uh, I'm going to say Hall of Fame guest. Not Mount Rushmore Hall no, of Fame. Not, yeah, Hall of Fame guest. N- just separate subcategories. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah. yeah. Uh, first ballot. Yeah, you're first. You're a first inductee this to the Hall of Fame. Actually, the first, I don't deserve first it, ballot. You know? yeah. yeah, I don't deserve it. Okay, fine. We'll take it back. All right, <laughs> <laughs> All right Tony Sheffield, you're the best. Cheers, boys. <laughs> Okay, time for an interview with Brandon Bean, and shout out to Body Armor. Body Armor Sports Drink helps us stay hydrated throughout our interviews with the biggest guests in the world. It's packed with electrolytes and no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or dyes. Body Armor Sports Drink hydrates today's athletes during competition, and more importantly, us during interviews. Buy some Body Armor today on Amazon. I love Body Armor. Strawberry banana, great flavor. The peach mango, great flavor. Their waters, their waters hit different. Check out Body Armor. Buy some today on Amazon. And now, here's Brandon Bean. Okay, we now welcome on recurring guest, general manager for the Buffalo Bills. It is Brandon Bean, not Billy Bean's brother. <laughs> Even though, how often do you get that? You know, it's funny. It's been a while, but the other day somebody asked me that. Yeah. And I was like, no, no, no. I thought I squashed that rumor my first a few years questions. ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but it's, you know, general manager, general manager. You'd be like, oh, those guys must know each other. Yeah, well, we were trying to figure out what... 
there because apparently he's not a GM anymore. Did he change roles or something? I don't. Yeah, I think he's something else with the A's. He's yeah. like elevated, where he has to do less work but still gets a set. <laughs> as long as he gets paid. Well. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So we're here at Bills Camp. Um, I guess first question is how are we feeling from a GM perspective going into the season? It must be. Is this a weird feeling when camp starts where you're like, well, I've done my job. Now they got to play. Yeah, you know it. It is. Well, the other part of it is you can't watch film. Like you're always once games start, you kind of start evaluating other players. All right, is this guy worth claiming? Is this guy worth swapping a player for? Like right now, there's no film, so you're just watching your 90 guys, and you know you're really just there. You know, talking to the coaches, and then is this guy learning the playbook? Is this guy not? Do we need to swap him out? And of course, injuries. You know that kind of thing, but. Uh, other than that, just kind of see how this team starts forming here. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to get your take on the running back discussion that's going yes. on right now, where it seems like, I mean, it, and it is the truth that the way that running backs are using the NFL compared to the salaries, compared to when they drop off, statistically, if you look from like a historical perspective, the way that they're kind of being underpaid right now, it kind of goes along with how the game is going right now. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, if you're a running back, that sucks. Yeah. It really sucks. But from your perspective as a GM, how do you approach looking at the running back position? Well, you do have to be – I mean, you do have to be smart with your money. And if you're paying, in our case, Josh Allen, um, you know, there's only so much to go around. And it's it's such a passing league. Yes, you would love to have some of these big-name big, big name guys. And, and my last draft in Carolina, we had McCaffrey, and, and he's making big bucks. But you look at what Christian can do – He's a dual weapon. You can line him up in the backfield. You can split him out. He's a return. He just brings so many different elements. I think the backs that bring that true three-down versatility, that you're going to use them as much throwing in the ball as you are handing those are the guys that are going to get paid, you know, probably going forward. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. So um, this is a dumb question. When you put together the roster, you know injuries happen, but do you ever say to yourself, what if we don't get injured? Because I say that to myself for all the teams I root for. I'm like, what if there are just no injuries this year? <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. Do you where, ever, where, where do like, I do sign you ever up? trick yourself and <laughs> say, like, well, what if we just don't get injured? Well, you you, you like that because it give, it could potentially give you some assets at the end. You know, you're not having your, your depth has stayed there throughout camp. And now you're not going to be able to keep, you know, if you feel you got four or five guys competing for that last couple spots, maybe you trade a guy for a six round pick fifth round pick something like that yeah mm -hmm. yeah i read really definitely i wouldn't plan well for injuries <laughs> no you I just, just hope. like we'll just don't get injured yeah. guys our strategy would be hope yeah yeah <laughs> like we make yeah. the best roster possible and be like turn injuries off we're good to go uh -huh. <laughs> madden, madden <laughs> yeah, no injuries right. no penalties uh -huh. yeah do you ever play madden do you ever act as like a gm on Madden just to test things out i don't do the gm but my boys uh they both do i got two in college and they're they do all that stuff and uh, I'm like, turn the penalties off, turn the injuries off, turn yeah. it all off. Yes. <laughs> I yes. Go to Because in here, I can't do that. So if, if we're going to be in fake world, let me, uh, let's me let do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I read that you were interim GM at one point in Carolina. That sounds like the best job ever. <laughs> what do you do as an interim general manager? I don't know. I still got my ass ripped. So <laughs> yeah. uh, it was about three weeks in, so it didn't take long. But, uh, you know, you're just, that was with Rivera. You know, Marty Herney had, had been fired. We had 10 weeks left. We started one and five, I think. And so you're just trying to – now you're working for the head coach. Now you're working with the head coach. And then you still now have these owner conversations after games that normally you're never in. I mean, that was the first time – I got to Carolina in 1998. The first time I walked in Jerry Richardson's office was he had just fired Marty Herney, and he pulls me in there. And honestly, I thought he was about to tell me, you're, you're getting fired too. But he's like, no, you're going to be the interim GM. So it was – it was kind of it was a wild ten weeks, but uh, enjoyed it a lot. They probably won't let you do too much damage to a roster as an interim guy, right? No, I think I swapped a kicker out, and yeah, uh, we <laughs> Just found to show some busy work. Yeah, yeah. but we we <laughs> actually we found Mario Addison who 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 did well in the league, but uh, it, the rosters are set. You're you're not able to do a lot. Yeah. Is there a moment when you're getting ready for the draft where you're sitting in these war rooms, you're watching all this tape, where you just have to tell everyone like, hey, we're we're thinking too much about this? Like, how do you find that balance of watching too much tape, pouring over every detail, and then also just saying, hey, guys, let's just – let's find the guy that we think fits the best here. Yeah, well, the way we kind of do it is we kind of set a deadline. So our board the Thursday before the draft is pretty much set. You know, at that point, um, there may be a few final conversations with ownership, uh, with Sean. We may sit here and just say – and at that point, the board's really set. It's more – 
all right, if we were on the clock, get, we start doing the scenarios. Um, but you start messing with your board. You know, the work you've, you've been working all fall. I mean, we're already working on this next year's draft. If you don't know a week ahead what you're doing and how your board's ranked, you probably did something wrong along the way. Yeah. Right. Uh, do right. you watch draft day getting ready for it? That's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I'd never seen that till a couple of years ago. It was uh, actually, it, it wasn't a, you know, for a Hollywood movie, it wasn't bad. Yeah. yeah. Was it yeah. at all a fair representation of what you do? I think there were some parts of it, but it was very, it was still Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, you know, how he pulled that whole trade off and all that. I, you know, I can't say I've seen yeah. that happen. Yeah. Uh, do, do you do anything in talent evaluation, like calling, finding out how many guys went to this guy's birthday party? <laughs> no. None I of that? Not, no, I haven't gone that far. Maybe I should. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's uh, very important. Another dumb thing that I would do as a GM, I'm wondering your take on this. It, has there ever been a moment where one of your scouts, stood on a table and was like, this is the guy, and you trusted him, and it ended up not being the guy, I would give him shit every single day for the rest of my life. <laughs> I, well, I've never actually had him stand on the table, but uh, there's been some guys that have stood up, and, and I will ask them, all right, so w when we go down there and we turn the pick in, you know, if this guy's got some, are you going to walk down there with me and and take the shit I'm going to take, you know, for drafting this guy, whether it's a, a guy who's – who's had some shit in his background or, mm -hmm. you know, he's a great player, but injuries. Okay, we're, yeah. We're going to have to manage him or yeah, this guy never, never caught a touchdown, never, never made a whole season healthy. There's a lot of different scenarios you got, you know, cause you want scouts to be, you know, fired up about a guy that, you know, in their area, but same time, it's easy if you don't have to be the guy that's got to actually answer the question. Yeah, yeah, I would just be, I would go up to the scout every day and just whisper in his ear, the guy's name <laughs> and just like make his life torture. Probably not the best, like, you know, way to have like a, a team work together, but I wouldn't be able to forget it. It's like yeah. when someone gives me a bad gambling pick, and for I just I bring it up constantly. There's a lot of ball busting, especially two, three years down the line, and it's both ways. Maybe you know, I, I take it too. Maybe I should have valued a guy higher than, that that we didn't put on the board as, as high as they wanted. But, yeah, uh, it's give and take. It's we have open forum. They can they can rip me the same way I can rip them. What's your favorite pick? You'd, I mean, it'd be hard to go against seventeen. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. stood on the table yeah. for Josh Allen. Yeah, we yes, did. Literally, did you? Yes, yeah, you did. did you see draft draft Josh Allen before? Did you see the website? No, I did not. Okay, I did not. I heard about Let's it. Let's do that uh -huh. question again. Yeah, did you see the website draft Josh Allen? Yes, I love. it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and that yeah. was that was probably the reason we took him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all we need. <laughs> yeah, that, were, were you were you surprised at his progression? Because a lot of times you see like it's tough to become an accurate, a more accurate passer after you get to the NFL. Like a lot of quarterbacks, it's like what you see in college as far as whether or not you have that accuracy. That's kind of what you're going to get. And then Josh just kind of became a superstar. Josh was playing at Wyoming against some team. The, the, thing, the thing that really bugged me was if you graded every throw that he did, if the guy dropped it, you know, we didn't count it. We, we created our own percentage with him. Or listen, if he two guys are barreling down on him, he got out of there mm -hmm. and he threw the ball away. Then you know we're not going to count that against them. That's actually a positive. So it's it's one of those things where ultimately we came up with our own percentage and yeah. and that's how we compared his numbers. And and again, same thing is is there's a lot of things that we thought watching his game at Wyoming that we could get correct. So, so what are the Commanders going to give you back? For the trade of Josh Allen that you were talking about earlier. <laughs> oh, Josh! Hey, how's it going? Josh is <laughs> here coming no, in. No, I had a follow up for that's, that. That's so, pretty cool. Um, so you found a way to make the Iowa game good. Yeah, there was okay. a there was a lot good in the <laughs> Iowa game. Josh, that was, a, that was a tough one. Well, actually, early in the game, two guys come barreling. He steps up. Guys run a post pattern, wide open in the end zone, hits him off the chest. I mean, he was not his fault. Playing with a lot of guys like us out yeah, there yeah. versus Iowa. Well, maybe yeah. like you. Yeah. I like, got good hands. I would have caught all got of Josh's balls. Yeah. Oh, my God. A tight spiral like yeah, that it sticks it. to you like glue. <laughs> so yeah. typical Josh, guys aren't making plays. Sometimes he's going to try to do a little too much. That's that's where the interceptions happen later in that game. Yeah, mm -hmm. And his toughness, I'm sure, jumped off, too, because he got his ass kicked in some he, of those games. He did. That one, I think they played Oregon that year. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, so it's, again, you, it's you're evaluating a guy at Wyoming, a guy at Oklahoma, a guy at Oklahoma State, a guy at Louisville. I mean, there was all over the map, and – Whereas pro tape is much easier to evaluate versus all the guys are playing with it, again, a smaller school like mm -hmm. Wyoming. Yeah. On his pro day, when he hit that cross-platform deep ball, were you like, fuck, why did he do that? Now everybody else knows? No, the throw that I was most mad at was in his bowl game because he had said I was at the game at Air Force that he got hurt. 
uh, on a boneheaded play that I busted his balls about a few times. But because uh, he called the play, not the coach. I was ripping the coach when I was there. <laughs> But I thought they were. I was hoping they would keep him out the rest of the season. Well, he comes back versus Central Michigan, and he he actually almost threw the same pass to against Denver here a couple of years ago. But he rips one. Uh, it was like a bang eight or something down the middle of the field, and it was just like a seed. And I wasn't at the game, but I'm watching it, and I'm going, Jesus, like, why are you doing this? Like, yeah, just sit out. We, you know, we like you. Yeah, you, you yeah, don't yeah. need to do you're this. Make money, yeah. yeah, you're, you're going to yeah. be okay. Yeah. When you first saw him in shorts. Talk to me about that moment. Well, he was the first time we met him was at Senior Bowl, mm -hmm. and he was actually he was he was like scared. He was trying to impress us. He wasn't the Josh that that you guys have gotten to know. He was he was a little uptight. We busted his chops a little bit about yeah, it. But yeah, but he looked good. He looked good on the hoof. Yeah, <laughs> very very good. So uh, I'm curious from a GM perspective because we've talked to a lot of different scouts about uh, Ohio State's practice facility and whether or not they actually have because. We had a similar idea not too long ago um, where they run the 40-yard dash. Their yard lines might be closer together than one yard, so their guys are faster. <laughs> do you get out? Do you measure with a tape measure every time you see somebody run a 40-yard <laughs> no, dash? No, I'm worried more about their play speed anyway, to be honest with you. Yeah? Uh, I mean, the in the in most of these guys that matter are running at the combine anyway. And, again, if some guy – you see him run four three eight there, but you're watching film and you're going, this guy's four five all day long. Like you're not like changing their grade, going, oh man, we got to move this guy up. Can you tell just by watching? Yeah, you can just you you, see, you put on the tape and you're like, yeah, that's that's not he's not four three. Yeah, we sit there and say this guy's game speed is you know four four seven four four eight something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll we we still want to time him and see what it is, see what it looks like, and go back and watch it and make sure. All right, or or have him run it again. But yeah. Now, game speed matters the most. Um, all right, I have one last question. This has been awesome. You're a recurring guest. This is your second time on, Brandon Bean. Uh, rowback question, rhoback.com. Use promo code TAKE, 20% off your first purchase. Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, all of it. Rowback.com, promo code TAKE. What's your go-to question at the combine? Do you do the cat dog? Do you do what, – what, what's the one that you, you use to try to see how the, the guys react? We don't – honestly, uh, it's my biggest question. It's easy is, you know, why if you're an underclassman, why you, would you come out early? Mm -hmm. And if, you, if you're if you a senior, why would you wait till a senior? Why didn't you come out early? So you're mm -hmm. getting them both ways. I'm trying to flip them both ways. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I like that. Yeah. I like that. What about a meal? You ever judge a guy on his meal? Um. I can't, I'm always watching if we eat, but I've, there's no one. There was only one. Actually, there was one of the quarterbacks, um, Joe Shane would know this, that we had a meal with uh, back in 2018. And, and we, the way he cut his steak, he, it was kind of interesting. Like he, uh -huh. he had his whole yep. thing. It was like. Not fluid. Yeah. It, it, was, uh, <laughs> it was very barbaric. I went to uh, St. Elmo's in 2015, and we sat in the Peyton Manning room, and I asked him what Andrew Luck orders, and they said chicken, and it was that moment I knew he was going to retire early. <laughs> I did. I swear to God. That's a true story. Hank can attest to it. <laughs> so that, good, that uh, is big. If a guy's ordering chicken at a steakhouse, yeah, yeah. he's probably, you know. He's probably done. It's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just different. Well, um, we're not letting Josh order any chicken. No. No chicken. No. Hell no. No chicken. Um, well, Brandon, thanks so much. Appreciate you uh, listening listening to the show uh, shout out your sons yeah. we're fans they're, big fans. they're the best yeah yeah what do we... there's an anecdote about your son oh yeah give it to us yeah oh yeah give us yeah my, my older one he i you go in his room and he's asleep and you guys are like playing in oh that's he, scary yeah that's that means <laughs> like, we're raising him more than you yeah that i means know that, <laughs> that's why it's right it is scary <laughs> our dumb takes are seeping yeah. into oh, his it's, brain it's alarm it's alarmed. like it comes well, on and you guys are playing I'm like how did you turn it he goes no it's, it comes on i have it played so i like that yeah, that's yeah. a ride or die aw yeah. first thing in the morning yeah he's always busting my balls why aren't you ever on the you're, why are you on this show why are you on that show and here he like, is it's <laughs> honestly probably smart that you don't listen to us yeah we would give That's you why a lot I worry of about choices. you raising him. No, yeah. I, no listen, we he's going to be a terrible general manager. There's like a whole group of like young kids who we're going to be their idols, and that's a scary world for America. That's a problem. <laughs> There's a lot of things scary about America. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a big one, though. We got to. They're going to be like they're going to do studies in 20 years. Like, this is your brain on PMT. <laughs> yeah. Any of you guys that woke up to this? You're, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're, Shout out you. You're you're, you're the new leaders of our country. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, you got man. it. Appreciate yeah. you having me on, guys. Brandon Bean was brought to you by Game Time, the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. Created by fans for fans, Game Time is the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. 
and they guarantee the lowest price. NFL is back. We got preseason college football week zero coming up. If you're looking to get into the game, use game time. Also, concert season still in effect. You can find those tickets on game time. Major League Baseball, buy them on game time. Everything's possible with the game time app. They have the biggest last minute price drops, and you can find the seats that you thought that you could never buy. The purchase process takes just two taps and 10 seconds. And once you buy your tickets, they're delivered directly to your phone. There's no printer needed. The app also allows you to easily share tickets with friends via text so you can get into the game seamlessly. Nothing worse than walking up to the stadium. You don't have the tickets. You have to log into five different things to figure out how to transfer them. No, 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 no. With game time, super easy. Just text them. Easy way to get into the game. It's seamless. Skip the hassle. Enjoy the moment. Download the game time app or go to the website, enter your email, and redeem code PMT for 20 bucks off your first purchase terms apply if you haven't used game time here's twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply all you have to do download the game time app or go to the website then you enter your email and redeem code pmt 20 bucks off okay it is mount rushmore time we're pre-taping the three mount rushmores this week because we will be on the road barstool 20th anniversary in boston on wednesday jake is not attending so he will we we had to do it so that Jake can be a part of the Mount Rushmore because uh, it is a tight race. So Thank this, you guys for including me. Of course. Of I didn't want to miss Jake. a full week of shows. Yeah. So. I didn't so want you to be either. involved. Yeah. There's nothing worse, Jake. I know. It's, yeah. I, there's nothing <laughs> I, worse, yeah. right, Hank? I don't like it. So I'm glad I'm a little bit involved. Okay. So uh, next up, we're going to do the Mount Rushmore of Trilogies. Mount Rushmore of Trilogies. This was Henry's uh, pick for Mount Rushmore. I like it, yeah. Yeah, no, I do too. And fake enough, Hank and Max have the floor. Wait, what? This is Wednesday's show? Oh, never mind. <sighs> this guy. It's so struggling. Is it us first? Big Count PFT. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they just went first. I know. I was not scrolling correctly. Damn. Jake. And I thought I would be like, and fitting enough. Like, shut up, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> like, before you speak. All right. <laughs> Trilogies. This is going to be tough. Yeah. Should we go with that eight that I did? Yeah, I threw eight, out eight, there? it's pretty good. Okay. So it's a controversial pick because oh, of God. what's happened since. But, but separate the art from the artist. Right. And understand that these are maybe the three like pound for pound best albums out there. And everyone... Still, those songs just go so, so hard. It is Kanye West, College Dropout, Late Registration, Graduation. They call it the College Trilogy. Yes, it is. It's called uh, College Trinity. So what's the official title? I call it College Trilogy. You can just put Kanye West and then put the three album names. It is, I mean, again, has said some things since, but if you put any of those songs on, mm -hmm. it's instant classic. College Dropout is maybe my favorite rap album of all time. It's It's... It's just classics. That's a great pick. I didn't yeah. think you guys were gonna go one one, but it's it's. it's Did you it's have it? Alpha step. Oh, yeah. Of course you had it. Omega step. step. AKA step. step. Gangsters walk. See, Pimps we know. Gonna talk. We know the, all the words. Ooh, hecky no, that boy is. I should have disavowed. Good, but... good stuff, cousin. <laughs> I disavow. What? Kanye. Well, this is oh, this is that's early two well, thousands. We, we, di we disavow Kanye as well the in art, terms of his recent the art comments. Stands. It is. I, sounds like you never listened to it. Probably not. Yeah. OJ okay. had some great seasons with the Bills. Mm -hmm. He ran for like... <laughs> and the Niners. 2,000 yards. Hitler was an artist, wasn't he? Does his art stand? No. Uh, no, because it sucked. Yeah, it wasn't that good. If he was like... If he was a fucking Rembrandt out Pica there. Picasso? Well, he probably would have just been an artist. Yeah. Okay. Don't you know that? That's a good pick. <laughs> that's a great pick. Sure, it would be controversial, but that's fine. I think people... Every... That... Those albums played nonstop for those like that ten year stretch. It's crazy. All right, who's up next? We are. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go with the Dark Knight trilogy. Okay. Good, mm. pick. Good pick. We had that too. Yeah. Good pick. Good pick. Hank, Max. Uh oh, they're texting each other. Why don't you just say it out loud? Oh, because you guys don't do the number system. I'd say that the number system is better on the podcast than 
Utter and silence. T- yeah, then just texting and waiting for a text back while he's sitting right there. All right, we're going to go Godfather. Oh, Godfather oh. 3? Uh, you took Godfather 3? Uh, oh. oh, yeah, no, you no, know no, you no, fucked no, up. No. Hank no, knows he no, fucked no, up. No, he forgot no, about the no, Godfather no, 3. Don't let him do this. The, don't let him do this. No, Hank knows. No, one and two is because, no. because one and two are so yeah, good. One and two are great. The trilogy People is People literally great. just say the Godfather 3 doesn't exist. <laughs> it, like They try to make it the so it's series? not a trilogy. No. T- don't, Hank, don't let no, him do No, Hank's this. right. This is like no, 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 when no, no, I drafted no, 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 Touchback no, as the best wrong, signal. You you know immediately when the pick is a bad one. Hank, don't let him do it. No, he's honest. No, I respect what Hank's doing. Don't listen to Max. Max, we're being honest. That wasn't on my list. Simply because of Godfather Three, but the series in itself is an unreal trilogy. But Correct. It's, it's it's true. A yeah. trilogy. That's a trilogy. You have to have the third, wrong. and they did. Wrong. Wrong. And it was bad. It was bad. But Godfather in, in One itself, and Two are. If best, you ranked, if you it's took the, the best, the, it's the best sequel of all time. But it is a trilogy. The trilogy and, then and sinks the whole trilogy within itself. That's not. That is incorrect. You no, know, it's it is, a sequel. You look at just when they thought the I was out. Entire body of work. <laughs> yeah, it's it's literally back just a meme. The entire body. That's of one work. of the most memorable lines of all time. <laughs> true or <laughs> false? What Don't movie is that from? The cat? What movie true is that from? It's from, from, it's from, from Twitter. No, from, no, the, no. The, the, that's just your brain true is Twitter. True or false? Also, Max. when are you guys gonna start calling it X? Yeah, because I get paid. When are you guys gonna start calling it X? When are you gonna start getting paid? When are you gonna start calling it X? I'm not verified. I'll never be verified. Actually, guess what? I think that the just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back. Is probably more well known from the Sopranos. Yeah, quoting true Silvio than it is from the doing the mocking it. Max, true or false? People pretend Godfather Three doesn't exist. People also say that it is the greatest series of movies of all time. Sequel, yes, first series, the greatest series of movies of all time. Okay. You love anything in second place. That was crazy. Yeah, Godfather Part. <laughs> all right, Max, you say the next one. D- do you disagree with me on this? I don't. I'm. I'm a little rattled. Uh, <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Good pick. Okay. Good pick. Good pick. Good pick. Godfather trilogy is going to look bad on the yeah. graphic. No, it's as not. As the first, first pick. No, it's yeah, not. Yeah, as, no, it's as not. a first no, pick. It's not. No, yeah, you it's not. get. It's not like no, it's Hank hiding knows. in third place. Hank knows. No, he doesn't. That's Hank your one. He's one. literally no. doing the. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't I, I think the Godfather good. looks good though. Yes, the Godfather does look good. <laughs> and is, just when you thought I was do. out, they pulled me back in. All time classic. Good. What's it from? They hate Twitter. X. They, Sopranos. They made me. They didn't like the Mike Breen double bang. They didn't like titty fucking. Yeah, that they was didn't crazy. Like titty, that that the, like the, the double fucking. bang was it was was the double bang regular season. Yeah, but it's a That's, great. That that was what I was disappointed in. Regular you, season. Everyone, Max even said he's like we should have done the LeBron Ray Allen three, but that that out of principle, even though I did pick LeBron, that was the worst. You don't have principle. You picked non. LeBron. That was the worst non uh, non Boston team involved sporting event I've ever watched. I was on the floor like shaking. <laughs> I was so mad, so sad. Okay, uh, Jake and Billy, uh, we are gonna go with the original Star Wars trilogy. Okay. okay. I've never seen it. Episode six, it's seven. Have you, Jake? Nope. Four, five, six. Is that what Sickening. it was? Crazy. We're, we're, I'm not a pop culture guy. Like, I've also he hasn't heard any of. Kanye I probably, I probably couldn't do four trilogies on here that I've seen. Okay. I've also not seen the Star Wars movies. I've seen, I think, most of the the last one. Yeah. Wait, episode six. Is that what they call it? Yeah, seen most of that. Return one. of the Jedi. Yeah. I, I think I've said this on the show, but growing up, I had them on VHS, and they were the three longest movies that I owned. So whenever my parents would be like, "You can watch a movie before bed," that's genius. I Sorry. always watched Star Wars, so I've seen genius. those three movies genius. hundreds of times, and Episode One, which I thought was good till I got old. Phantom Menace. Side note: uh, the show Blaze, they throw in random forty-five episode, forty-five minute episodes. That fucks me up for that exact reason. My son's like one more, and I'll press play, and I think it's twenty minutes. It's forty-five. Yeah, fucking brutal. Uh, okay, PFT. I, some decisions. I said we go either two, three. Yep, two. I like two. You we like, have two like picks. Two? Okay, you have two picks. Let's go, Ali Frazier. Ali Frazier. The the pinnacle of boxing trilogies, Ali Frazier. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? I like it. Okay, it's a good uh, pick. and now what do we go with our second one? You don't like you don't you don't okay. Hank's got nothing for us. Ali Frazier's is a good pick though. Good pick. Thank I li- you. I like seven ten. <laughs> Shut up! Four, don't laugh. Four seven ten. I like, I think we go seven. Okay. Toy Story trilogy. They just made a There's fourth. There's a fourth. Ah. Bang. Okay, ah. so then we have to do another pick. Great. Has it come out? Yeah, yeah 2019. Right. It was on our no. list originally. Okay. 
Damn, you guys don't know ball. Yeah, I haven't seen Toy Story 4. I'm sorry. The first three were awesome. It's two is fine. Three was really, really good. Yeah, awesome. they didn't let up. It's kind of the reverse Godfather. Four. Actually, I saw four. It was terrible. Didn't see it. That's why it's... They should have Many stopped people say that they it's don't even count trilogy. the fourth one. Yeah, yeah. Toy Story 4 is a 97% on Rotten. No, no I saw it. I, yeah. right I mean, granted, it was like I was a fully grown adult, but it was not. Three was great. Yeah. Four was fine, if not bad. Although every single animated movie has like a 98 yeah. on Yeah. All right, what do we do now, PFT? Shit, I didn't know they made a fourth. We can go 10. Yeah, let's go 10. Say it. Mighty Ducks. Mighty Ducks trilogy. Good pick. Yeah. Very quack. 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 Yeah, it quack. is. No. Quack. Yes, it is. No. Quack. They evolved it. <laughs> no, three sucked. Three, no, three they go to the, Mighty the Ducks, private school, Mighty right? Mighty Ducks yeah. three was worse than... They won, like, the world championship, yeah. and they yeah. have to go to high school, and they suck. It made no sense. No. <laughs> they were young. That, they, were, they won the fucking under-14 world championship. That's what made it, it rock. It's like they're <laughs> no. the best hockey players in the world, but... That one school. School, yeah. Yeah. You don't know ball. You don't know puck, Hank. You're no. not a puck guy. Godfather 3 is better than uh, Mighty Ducks 3. Uh, no. no. Yeah, no. look at those Rotten no. Tomatoes. No. Okay, yeah, no. let's let's RT off. Well, uh, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we are going to go boxing with a... Box Wait, it's our turn. Oh. Sorry, Jake doesn't know boxing either. It's Jake's pick. Okay. Was it Jake and Billy or Jake and Mims? Oh, yeah. Okay. Max, I don't okay. think we have a fourth pick. Um, <laughs> this was this is your category, Hank. <laughs> you picked this. I just thought it was cool. I think cool. you recommended this last week too. Oh, I like, I know. Hank's been pushing trilogies on us for months. <laughs> I like it. I don't know. I guess I didn't. I didn't uh, think you anyone's gonna pick Star Wars because no you fuckers have watched it. All right, our next pick is going to be Back to the Future. Okay. The same movie, three times. Three of them. <laughs> what happened? Uh, right? well, it yeah. is the same movie <laughs> three right. times. Back to the Future is an incredible trilogy. I actually just saw the Broadway show in New York last month. It's brand new. Highly recommend. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Doc Brown. Back to the Future. Yeah. The DeLorean. Yes. This is great because we're basically just talking about a bunch of things that we haven't consumed. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was writing I my list. I don't really know so what like, to I have say. A lot that I, I saw the first one. <laughs> yeah. I think I saw the second one. I, like I definitely how, didn't see the third one. I like how people just always I watch them all adjust. Once when I was they younger. do like photoshops yeah. of uh, the day that they come back in time to. Yeah. And you can just make that any day. Oh, yeah. I think the Sports Center does that a lot. Yeah. The all right. Count. Hank, two picks, but you might not have two. Uh, we're going to go. I mean, one Max just sent me is. <laughs> so, wait, you only came up with a trilogy of trilogies? No. Well, all, everything was picked. And, uh, should we do three rounds in honor of no. trilogies? Yeah, <laughs> no, yes, yes. absolutely yes. not. <laughs> Mount Trishmore. Uh, the I think it's the greatest sporting documentary, or one of my top, top five, top three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think. I mean, I said that was a little bit. I was. You I love was, this pick. It's yeah. not number one, but it's it's the best boxing documentary I've ever seen. Gaddy Ward. Okay, but it was actually a trilogy. Yeah. 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 Oh, you, I thought you were saying the documentary. No, was no. Also but if you part. watch, it's on HBO. Yeah. It's it's if you haven't watched it, you should. Yes. It's about the Gaddy yes, Ward I had, trilogy. We had it on our list. It's, head body. Head body. Yes. It, it's, not it's you, the not real, you, not you, yeah. not me. Yeah, yeah, we had it on our list. But it's truly like they; these guys were fighting, yeah. and they were basically killing each other for eleven rounds straight. Yeah. It's, it's, great the, it's the craziest boxing Gatti I've Ward ever witnessed. Documentary? No, no, the guy who fights. Fights. Hank, the Hank is just thinking about the fights through the lens of this one documentary that yes. he likes. Okay. It, watch the documentary tonight; you'll be ready to run through a brick wall. Uh, yes. I, I might just watch the fights. What, I, Max? That what? kidney shot is so good. Where we're going here? Oh, we're about Oh, you got it. You got this, Cook. This I is titty fucking all I, over again. I just don't think it makes any sense. Nah, you cook. Uh, the Holy Trinity. Oh. <laughs> Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Oh, what, what is that? Oh, they all exist concurrently, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know if that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah that, no, it they, does. That doesn't... You guys did the, you guys did the college in... trinity. We what? did the Holy yeah, Trinity. Yeah, I saw the... So I saw the college trinity, and I was like, could I just go... Father, the Kanye West, Spirit? that's called the College Trinity. Okay. We are choosing the Holy Trinity. <laughs> they all happen at the same time? It's the, I sent the definition of what Trinity is. How about the... Uh, you keep saying Trinity. Trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> How about the trilogy of Philadelphia Eagles <laughs> NFC Championship losses in a row? Ooh. In yeah. the mid-2000s. That would have been a good one, too. A group one. or series of three related things. Okay. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's a good pick. Right. Thank you. 
Fuck yeah. Great, great scramble pick by Max. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> you heard the word Trinity and you're like, let's go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, World Wars. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, our final pick is going to be Spider Man. Tobey Maguire Spider Man movies. Okay. okay. Ooh. The Crazy. upside down kiss. Yeah, the upside down kiss, and then when uh, what's his? I don't. I forget his name, but James Franco's character he turns into a bad guy. He's yeah. canceled. Have you seen the Have yeah. you seen the Broadway play? Uh, I did. Then somebody. High I think someone. Do you highly recommend? No, I mean it's not. Someone I like think, died, yeah, right? I think so. Yeah. Wild. Wow. It was like They're a like flying, by right? web. It was like the WWE oh. fall into the turnbuckle thing. Yeah. Yeah. So those are. That's a great trilogy. Okay. Great Trinity. All right. Last pick. What should we do? PFT. We go the last one on our list. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I think that's too old. Four, five, six. Then. That's that's three. That's a trilogy of yeah. numbers. Okay. Man, I don't know what we pick. We have so many. What What do you guys want us to pick? Four, five, six. You pick. Five. No, you fucked up. Okay. Let's see what five is. They were gonna say it either <laughs> way, Hank. No, pitch perfect. Mm-hmm. It's a great. That's great. And a Are you serious? The, the what are you gonna song? say about pitch perfect? No, the cup Hank, song. No, he's mad about my text that I just sent. No, no, I'm not. Uh, that's fine. We're good. Um, what are you gonna say about pitch perfect? I've seen all three. Your guys' logic is so you can't get as mad as we did about the Godfather, and then pick like. Shitty fucking. <laughs> Pitch Perfect two and three were terrible. No, they weren't. Pitch Perfect yeah. one. Which one was the German? Yeah, they went overseas. That was Which perfect. one was the German? I don't even know. Which one was the German? That movie was three. good. I haven't even seen that three. movie. Was good. <laughs> I don't know which one it was. Was such a letdown. All right. Pitch Perfect one, fantastic. So maybe be we honest, fucked I up. I haven't, I, seen the, I haven't seen the third one, but yeah. the first two were good. Uh, misses. I thought we were going to do. I thought you were going to go Jay Z Blueprint or Bird Magic Finals. Oh yeah. Ooh. I was going to go with uh, the second three-peat of the Bulls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although it was like six. It's That's a six, the six. Six, six is so G. it's not really a trilogy. No, it's like Star Wars. Like, there's there's six Star Wars, but he picked the first trilogy. You yeah, I guess, the first but you or think second. of it as more of like... And MJ didn't peat. do... Was it a six-peat? Yeah, but he was putting his... When he when he won, he would be like five, six. Like, he wasn't saying one, two, three again. But it's a three-peat. Right. Therefore... A trilogy would have been if they won another three peat. No, <laughs> a trilogy of three peats. Yeah, a trilogy of trilogies. Okay. Uh, awesome powers, good. Yeah, I don't. You can't pick that. Awesome you powers couldn't. You, good. If that was the case, then we would have been able to pick Toy Story. No, because it was four, five, six. But they didn't. They haven't come out with four. They haven't come out with. But when they won the fourth, that was the fourth. It was the first of the second three. But movies. it was the fourth. It was the first of the but second three. it was the fourth. Movies. So could you just say like the first three movies of Harry Potter? Well, like, under Hank's rules, yeah. Well, but that's I what then Jake Star Wars rules don't count. Yeah. Jake Star Wars isn't a pick. Oh, yeah, another good one. The, uh, uh, the Jake three. picked a trilogy of a, a series of movies where there's eight. The, I didn't know that. I'm not a Star Wars guy. Same. They have eight? There's eight Star Wars. So you just Googled it and picked it? But there were like. <laughs> that and memes as hell. There were like 25 <laughs> years in between them. There was a lot of years in between oh, the bowls. two. What about <laughs> that's not, that's, time is relative? It's the same guy. Was it the same actors in the Star George Wars? George Lucas. But was it the same actors? Yeah. Mark Hamill's in him. Okay. Um, we missed out on a couple Matrix, right? That was Matrix a sucks. Oh, yeah. Cars Cars you think was, that Matrix sucks? No. Again, it's pitch perfect. Matrix 1, fantastic. 2, 3, terrible. Cars was the other one, but Cars 2 was weird. Um of uh, the three pitching changes that the Astros use in the World Series <laughs> to yeah. throw the combined no hitter. Damn, we should have done that. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, bad boys. Any others? Naked uh, Gun. Naked Gun. Bad News Bears, the original one. Bad News Bears. There's original. three of those. I had no I idea. Know yeah, there's three of those. There's the original one. There's the one where they go to the Astrodome, and then I think they go to Japan. Hangover. Oh, that, that, that sounds t- like Hangover a terrible been a bad, wouldn't have been a bad pick. Oh, it was fun. The Blade trilogy. The Good Hangover call. movies were actually. All pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. I, don't I mean, it was the same the thing, but yeah. it was like they yeah. did a good job with. But that's one of those where the, the first is such a classic. Yeah, it's, it's like tough to I like the pirates. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, pirates of Caribbean and slap Transformers. But there's been a bunch. Revenge. Yeah. Actually, I, were there four? Pirates, I think there's been though? a bunch of pirates. I think there were four pirates. Yeah. The 
I think what we learned yeah, here but... is ca- trilogies low key suck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like I think we just learned that because that yeah. was a struggle to get that. Shout Except for God, the though. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. 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 shout out God, shout yeah. out God, yeah. and Kanye. <laughs> We, I have a lot to watch. It's a good. This is You're gonna, not going to watch any of these. This is going to be a real no. holy war for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We've kind of boxed ourselves in. <laughs> Connie versus God. Uh, okay, good Mount Rushmore. May, uh, uh, no, actually, no. Not a good Mount Rushmore. <laughs> I tried. Okay, uh, let's wrap up the show with some FAQs. It is weird being back in New York. Uh, Don't miss it. I was walking around my neighborhood today. I was walking around uh, the West Village, and I was like, you know, this place is pretty cool. I could see myself living here. I really enjoyed it. You know, once once you step away from it for a while, you come back. But um, then I got into Midtown. I was like, New York sucks ass. Uh, We also, coming back here is weird because I got a peek into our old studio, and... (sighs) Everyone probably isn't surprised to hear this, but Billy has completely trashed it and taken it over. That's interesting because I was talking to Billy yesterday and he said, okay, I got to get going because I need to clean up the studio before you guys get back. So it sounds like he didn't do that. No, oh, no, 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 no. I peeked in. So he put a he put a piece of paper on the door that said Billy's office. Yeah. I ripped that off uh, at a principal. And then I looked in and it was like, I thought I was a hoarder. It's been like three weeks. So I talked to Billy about it a little bit because I was I was I wasn't mad. I was disappointed, and he said that every other studio that just wanted to throw something out threw it into our studio. Yeah, right. So that's the best lie ever. Yeah, well, I Big Cat, you'll never believe this, but it was everybody's fault except for Billy's. Yes. I was in there today with Billy and someone else who is helping uh, with you know designing our new office. We were talking about things that we're going to bring and things we should. Uh, Get into our new studio. My file cabinet needs to go. And it needs to be brought. Why? Because you lost your key and you have cash in there? No, I have like all like old phones and sh- a bunch of shit I just didn't want to throw out. Your burners? Do you lose your keys? No. Oh. Why? I was just sad. No, I Why don't you just bring the phones? I didn't want to I didn't want to do the act of cleaning out my file cabinet, so I said just bring the whole file cabinet and then when I bring it to Chicago, I'll never open it again, but I know it's safe. So we're in there There's earlier. There's nothing in there of value, actually. And I was talking about how messy it was, and I think I said to Billy, like, you clean this? As in, like, he will. Cl- you have to clean this? And he thought I said, oh, you clean this? And he's like, yeah, I did. Thank you. <laughs> and I was like, wait, 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 wait. This is, this is after you clean. He's like, yeah, yeah, I cleaned it up earlier. And I was like, Billy, this is this is disgusting. Like this is the worst that it ever was. Mm. Oh man, that was a funny, it, it funny is little interaction. There. And so I was giving him shit about it, and he was like, "Well, no, it's not actually anything that I put in here or didn't clean out. Like just like probably overnight, everybody else just trashed uh, it." Oh, uh, and I was like, "What's that on the ground?" He's like, "Oh yeah, I had a little spill. Uh, it was like half the room covered in dust." Yes, yeah, oh, uh, uh, officer, no, this isn't my weed. I was holding it for a friend. Yeah, Billy's holding everybody else's yeah. shit. He asked me. He asked me to bring it from one place to another. That's not mine. All the protein powder, pre-workout, and uh, aquarium equipment actually belongs to out and about. Oh, <laughs> uh, actually, Joey might. Joey, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. FAQs. At what point during PMT did you guys realize you guys would be doing this for the rest of your life? Ooh. Was it a certain interview or just how many listeners you had? Yes, right now. Yeah, wait. We're going to do this till we die. Well, yeah, because we're going to die from Legionnaire's disease. That's true. So today. Uh, I just, I knew after like a month when I got recognized uh, at a dentist's office in Austin, Texas, and I'd purposely tried to keep my face like off all cameras. But when I got recognized there, I was like, this might be more wide reaching. Yeah. Than I thought if somebody is that into the show that they can pick up on that. Yeah. I, I think it was probably fall of 2016 when I was like, oh shit, this is like a rocket ship that we're front seat for. Mm-hmm. It's rules. I had like a great three months when I thought we were getting a TV show on ESPN. I was like, this is going to be everything. Oh. And then when it got canceled, I was like, that was fun. Oh. I got to tell you guys this. I was at Stu Finer's house today. He never told us this story. It's fucking insane. When we went, we went to Stu Finer's house. I think it was right around when we were like the summer before the Barstool Van Talk. And I actually remember a little bit of uh, what he was saying that you and I, PFT, went off to a bench 
to talk. We I think maybe had a phone call or something, right? So he kind of knew what was going on, but we couldn't tell him everything. He said that when we were there, a hawk came and picked up a squirrel. And after we left, the hawk dropped the dead squirrel on the bench we were sitting on. And his wife said, whatever those guys were talking about, it's not going to work out. And I was like, <laughs> Stu, why did you crazy. fucking tell us? That's wild. <laughs> wild. He just Holy didn't shit. tell us his story. It's been yeah. like six years. It has nothing to do with us or ESPN. The reason no, the show was canceled was- Sam Ponder, no. No. All, yeah, it's all, all wet under the bridge now, Sam. We're great friends. It was a hawk. It was the hawk's fault. But isn't that crazy? Is crazy. He just didn't tell us? Yeah. He's like, well, if I told you, what would you tell us? Like, we wouldn't have done the show. That's a bad omen. Really bad. And his wife, he said his wife's a witch. Ah, no, he might have said bitch. <laughs> okay, go ahead. No, Sandy's a, the best. Absolute best host in the world. Whatever happened to Jilly Football? Thanks, Mr. Billy. I hear from her every now and again. Yeah. Yeah. She's still around. I like we Jilly Football was great. Uh she didn't fully get She was a great woman to have around. Great woman, yeah. great woman. Podcast. Uh very not sweet, as great. Very not as great. Person. But she was so and I like the idea. Heart of we gold. Should, we should run back the idea. Yeah. Get, I would actually getting an older person. Yeah. I think we should ideally it would rule if next summer. We got like a sixty to seventy year old retired Chicago union worker. That'd be great. That yeah. would be awesome. Or like we a, just had like a guy's guy. Or like a, a seven, uh, maybe like a, a ninety year old uh, rich widow, mm. and then we become her best friends. Yes, and Lisa then in her will. Well, no, she'll we still probably just give it all to the dog. And we get in the will. But then yeah. we we take her dog too. Yeah, but yeah, wouldn't that be cool if we just had like a real. A guy who didn't even know what the internet was. Yeah, it'd be awesome. I, I always thought that having like an older person that doesn't understand podcasts just to be like either the the grandparent of the podcast would be a good idea. Yeah, so and Jilly did a good job at yeah, that. Yeah, she did. She, she invented just our darling Jake. She did, yeah. All right, so Jake, when you get to this point, because you listen to every show before it even comes out, you pervert. Uh, he does. He does go to the Dropbox. Shout out Jake. He works very hard because he writes the blogs for us. Uh, set a reminder for... Right after the national championship game, March Madness, hire old dude. Old person, yeah. We did a woman, so let's try to do a dude. Best candidate. The best candidate available. Yeah. Hey, PMT crew plus second place Max. Ooh. Is that's the, felt unnecessary. Is the, also necessary. Is the new office going to be ready in time for football season, and are we getting a video tour of the office? Good question. Yes, we are. So here are the dates. We are getting a video tour. We are definitely getting a video tour. It will not be ready for football season. It will be ready for football season. Just football season goes a long time, Hank. Uh, it True. will be so everyone, we appreciate, by the way, everyone who's bared with us for this weird summer where we were traveling, moving, all that stuff. Um Everyone, I, we didn't get many complaints about, you know, being remote, which I appreciate because yeah. it was a crazy summer. There's a lot of shit that happened in the last four months. Right. Uh, but the goal, and I think I do believe this, the first part of my take in the new studio will be the Sunday of week three. So the Sunday of week three will be our first part of my take in the new studio. I'm so mad that you said that. No, no, no. That's like a month. No, it yeah. doesn't sound that bad. No, it really doesn't. It's 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 September 23rd or whatever it is. Um and then what I've been told, so we'll we'll start working and like we'll start working out of it after week 3. What I've been told is that uh October 13th will be the official all the all the floors are swept, everything's done. I think September 23rd to October 13th. We will be in there, but it will be kind of a slower migration to get everyone in there because they're finishing up some of the other podcast studios. But that's, listen, week three, That's bar we barely got our, our feet wet. So just deal with it until week three. But we're, we're going to be here. And the video tour of the studio, that should come out probably pretty soon. So if, if you haven't seen it come out yet, ask Max what's the deal. He's working on editing Nothing it. Nothing to do with me. But yeah, that, that was, I liked the idea of a video tour I think that person doesn't understand that this office, we didn't put, we didn't build a 40,000 square foot office for us to just play around and not put it on video. That would be so you funny. You will see a video tour basically every single day. It would be so funny if we had the full court basketball, the golf simulator, all that stuff baked in, and then we never used it. Yeah. Camera. It was just you like will for see us it. to do during breaks. You will see it all the time. It's going to be awesome. Why with this one? 
What's the worst segment idea that was ever brought up for the show and who thought of it? First boob. Ooh. And I don't know who thought of that one. I think that I don't was think that was that bad. I think that, well, we did it one time. Yes, Ice Cube, and it was awkward. Yeah, yeah, that was probably a bad person to ask. Should we bring back first boob? I'm down. Okay, Hank, what's your first boob? In a movie, Air, airplane. Oh yeah, that's a good one because it's rated PG. They didn't have an R rating back then for it. I want to say mine was Kate Winslet, but I think it actually was Braveheart. Yeah, mine's Braveheart. Yeah, I think, I think it's we've Braveheart. talked about this before. Yeah, yeah Braveheart just came out of nowhere. I watched He Got Game with my grandparents. <laughs> Great that scene. was something. Mm -hmm. All timer. That was something. Yeah. Max, what was your first boob? Uh, Titanic. Nice memes. Nice. Uh, Euro trip. Oh, see, it's not a bad question. We talked about it. Uh, trilogies. How I would always watch Star Wars. It was the longest movie I had. The only movie I had. Oh, I had Titanic, and then I had like a DVD of the Swordfish movie. Oh. And there was there was boobs in that. Mm -hmm. It was boobs. I also want to say, one of the. I first that movie ish all the time. Boobs. Terrible movie. Starship Troopers. Yeah, that had a lot of boobs in it. Ninety-seven. A lot of shower boobs. That sounds about like one of that was one of it, w Starship Troopers. Wild Things. Good movie. That what that had some boobs. I think I think Braveheart was like ninety-four, ninety-five. Yeah, and it was two VHSs. Yeah, which is crazy. I convinced myself that I saw boobs in Forrest Gump, but they they don't show them. But I, I would like pause the v, the VHS and be like, "Look, that's that, a boob." Side boob, boob for sure in Forrest Gump. Yeah, side boob, side for boob. sure. And maybe some under boob. Yeah. Um, what are some other bad segments that we've done? <sighs> I don't know. Can we do an Island Boys segment. I mean, that, was fi that was fire or fuck boys. Rushmore yeah. of guests. Yes, yeah. very bad, very bad idea. Yeah, I think... Sound off in the comments. I'm sure there's, the there's ones we're forgetting. Some, some of the people don't like. Um, okay. Great show, boys. Uh, here's the new... Check it out. I saw it. New lottery ball machine. Pretty Love sick. Love it. Yeah. Pretty sick. So it's it's the... It's a picture you're showing. It's a picture I'm showing. It's the height of a 5'3 woman. It's a normal height. Normal height. Oh, one last thing. Max. James Harden fined $100,000 by the NBA. They did an investigation. Oh, for selling wine to the 14-year-olds? They did an investigation to whether James Harden said the things that he was on camera saying. They came to the conclusion that he did say all those things about Daryl Morey, so they fined him 100 k What are your thoughts on that, Max? Not enough. Find him more. More. Get him out of here. Kick him off the tour. Kick him off the tour. Uh, okay. Uh, Andy Staples on Friday, college football preview. Get excited. Week zero coming up. Uh, let's see. Oh, and also watch the uh, Barstool 20th anniversary. Yeah. Live stream yeah. Wednesday night. A punk. I got a tux. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look good. Are okay. you going to look good? Uh, I have an idea for an outfit that I have not executed yet, so there's a chance I look terrible. Okay. Ooh. That's a little teaser. I'm excited okay. about getting the band I'm doing back a, I'm doing a DIY outfit. Ooh, that's going to be bad. But it could be cool. It... it I'll tell you one thing. In my head, when I thought of it, I was like, I'm going to crush. Okay. Have I done it yet? No. No. Am I going to do it right before the show? Yes. If it works out, do I have a backup? No. Oh, Hank, I just saw the thing that you were talking about. Stephen A. Smith reported that Lonzo Ball has trouble sitting. But then Lonzo then Ball, Lonzo Ball video of him sitting. Of, of him sitting and standing. And standing. With one leg. Yeah. So that, He's great at sitting. It was kind of sad, though, that clip of him <laughs> a couple days ago where he's like, yeah, the Bulls basically built a team around like me to unlock everything, and I uh, can't play. It's like, cool. Cool. This guy, uh, he can sit. This guy's sit one of the best. Stand. He's doing it on one leg, too. Sit and stand. And his house looks sick. Um. All right. Numbers. 69. Memes, you ever gotten this? I have not. Max is going to hit the machine now. Oh, oh, machine, old school, old school. Can we trust him? All right, what are your guys' guesses? Uh, Ninety-nine. I'm gonna go with one. Seventeen. All right, Max, whenever you're ready. Uh, oh, see you. What's your guess, Max? You're on input eleven. <laughs> Memes is such electric. Yeah. It's also broken. Billy broke it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Just pick one out there with your hand. He's struggling. 
I mean, these lottery balls don't count. We should just wait for the new lottery ball. We do because people like to guess. Hank makes makes a good point. The lotto balls out of this machine should not count for anything. We start all over again. He's saying it's broken. No, I agree. No, it's a fresh slate. Great point. Great point. I know, but people like to guess. It's this thing we do at the end of the show. People like to guess. It's worse than preseason. Why can't people guess? It's preseason for the new machine. But it's not, yeah. This could be the biggest win in in, in preseason lottery ball history. I I don't even. Max, do you have it? I might hold out. He's. He's struggling. He might not know that you have to plug it in. He seriously thinks it's broken. Oh, wait. What is the number? Uh, It hasn't been drawn yet. He's standing next to the machine. The balls are going. 38. 38. Ah, okay. All right. Love you guys. Uh, Parcel Van Talk could have been all avoided if Stu Finder's wife had told us about a hawk dropping a squirrel onto a bench that we talked on. (laughs) 